One, two, one, two, one, two. Audio check. One, two. Okay. Dear, my internet's flashing red. <laughs> For once, it's not a laptop thing, but I am getting little flashes of red. I don't, norm don't normally see that on my stream software. So I hope my internet's not playing up today because that would be really bad. I'm getting really low bit rates at the moment. It's really not good. Um, let me see, I can't see the chat. Let me see if I can get the chat open and see what everyone's saying at the moment. Uh, hello, everybody. Just doing a, my usual check. Um, I'm getting a quite intermittent internet at the moment. It's not the best. I'm not going to lie, it is not the best. So you're going to have to let me know how it's doing for you guys. Let me know if the if I'm streaming okay, if the audio sounds good, and if you can see the screen. Um, yeah, it keeps flashing red, so it's really worrying me at the moment. Sounds a little low. Sounds a little low. Okay, maybe I need to get close to the mic. L I'm not worried about volume being low. Um, check one, check two. Yeah, it does look a bit low, actually. It's a bit lower than normal. I wonder what's going on there. Check one, check two, check one, check two. Is that working? That's not going. I wonder if someone's been messing with my knobs. Pause. Um, check one. Let me know how the audio is, everybody. That's fine. That's better. Okay, cool. So I'll just talk a bit more directly into the mic. Um, but how's the stream as well? Let me know how the stream is, because like I said, I, I'm. It's still. It's not solved. It's resolved itself. Yeah, I can see that. I'm. I've not got a very strong. Um, network connection at the moment but i want to know if that's playing out of your end because if it's if it's not affecting anything then i'll just ignore it as distracting as it is to have flashing red <laughs> just let me know i know i know it's a bit of a tedious thing but i, I don't know unless you tell me let's go let's move out the audio is perfect okay cool what i'll do then actually um yeah, I can. Uh, thank you. And I, 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 I'm, I, Shimani, I'm actually going to take myself off the screen in a minute. And that's not just because um, it's very late over here. It's quarter past 10, 20 past 10. I got my hood up and I'm feeling kind of tired. Um, it's also because I want to preserve my internet connection as much as possible. I don't want anything cutting out whilst I'm playing this back to you. So um video feed is lagging but audio is okay okay cool we know what we'll do then we'll just get rid of the video feed and then all is well so let's just get me let's just get me off the screen because that's, that's not adding any value anyway there we go boom all right me off the screen and you can hear me okay thank you for doing the um usual checking in and just making sure that everything's working in terms of the audio and everything's correct the setup's correct because that means we can get started now so first of all just uh obviously a good evening to everyone i know we started this live stream at a very late time <laughs> and it's late for me as well and it's because i wanted to do this yesterday but i'd only managed to get everything done in terms of the thumbnail and stuff like really late and it was too late to start the stream and i wanted to do i've actually got another stream planned for tomorrow so I've got another stream planned for tomorrow. If you haven't got that in your diary, I'll be going live with Quelly Mika. Some of you will know him. He's the one who went head to head with Metatron and gave him a roasting and a toasting. He's also uh, quite a good friend of mine over the last, you know, eight or nine months. We've actually grown quite close. So we're going to have a live stream together and we're going to cover the Metatron content. So I'm telling you right now that is going to be uh, pretty banging. Um, hello, RJ McKenzie. And that's going to be pretty banging. So please do make sure you join us tomorrow. If you haven't got, um, if you haven't got any plans, or even if you do have plans, cancel them. <laughs> I was joking. But yeah, join us tomorrow for that live stream because that is going to be an epic moment. Um, Petrina, thank you very much. I really appreciate that donation. Um, and pretty dedicated content, or did pretty dedicated responses to my content um i'd imagine it's because the the you know the stuff that we cover here on this channel really ruffles feathers and really kind of gets and rubs eurocentrists up the wrong way and 
Mm. Are you guys getting buffering? Because I'm getting warnings from YouTube that you guys got to get buffering. I hate the fact that I have to interrupt my speech just to to, to ask you that. Uh, this is a pain. All right, let's see. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to carry on. Um, so, like I was saying, the yes, yeah, so I've got a couple of channels that really do dedicate quite a lot of their time and resources to um, making content that basically is just anti the content that I put out. Um, and to be honest with you, it's, it's not a problem. I normally just ignore them. But um, at the same time, sometimes, you know, the arguments they raise are honestly often so bad, it's no point in me saying anything and the the only person that benefits from me was from me responding is their channels because they often don't have uh very much in terms of viewers or subscriber bases so i'm just giving them attention and giving them my energy um however it can be fun <laughs> to be totally honest with you so in today's one we're gonna have a little bit of fun um i'm gonna be a little bit petty in that i'm not gonna share <laughs> that much in terms of the the channel i'm not even gonna give the channel name if you know if you recognize it then that that's good for you but we are gonna go through the content that's covered um then kind of attempting to debunk one of my videos and as a we're gonna kind of see what what the standard of these debunkers are like and see if there's any good arguments being raised and i think one of the benefits I actually found of doing this is it's really good to kind of like tackle and see what the the best thing that Eurocentrism has to offer in terms of arguments against, um, you know, what we propose, which is an African centred um, Egyptian civil or ancient Egyptian or Kemetic civilization. Um, what arguments do they have against it? Because our arguments for obviously you've been here, you know, they're anthropometric, anthropomorphic. Um, we make cranial arguments. We make arguments about the body proportions, the culture, the linguistics, the hair. Literally everything we can equate to being in line with modern Black African culture. And yet the Eurocentric argument normally tends to fall around two things. It's either the misinterpretation of faded statues or some kind of quasi um, interpretation of DNA results. That That's it. That's literally the crux of the European argument. If it's, it's either a faded statue, a tampered fake or tampered slash fake statue, proven fakes, by the way, or some kind of misinterpretation of DNA. And that's it. That's literally the only three arguments you're ever going to get from Eurocentrists. They don't have anything beyond that. So I'm going to um, share with you um, one of these videos that's kind of rebutting. And this video actually focuses on Queen T. So that's what you see in the thumbnail. So you can see in the thumbnail, it's got the picture of Queen T. That's what this kind of video rebuttal that comes against me or comes against this channel um is is focused on the fact that i falsified queen t and queen t actually i've got her all wrong she's not a black woman at all she's not if you didn't know that by the way guys queen t wasn't black yeah she wasn't black at all she was <laughs> she was a european woman and it's just it's a bust that has darkened you know, and I, I almost don't want to spoil it because this is you can see the level of joy I'm getting with sharing this with you guys because this is this actually makes for really good entertainment. So please do like grab your popcorn. We're going to go and enter the world of Eurocentric lunacy. Just just, you know, suspend your disbelief for a moment and just enjoy the process because this actually is quite fun. We're going to go through this absolutely ridiculous video together see what some of the arguments the best arguments these crazy eurocentrists have to offer yeah and see if they make good arguments or see if you know you, you maybe maybe you're convinced maybe we'll get to this end of this live stream and you're like you know what they're right you're you know queen t was probably you know probably a white woman you know i could be wrong i could be wrong i'll, I'll leave you to be the judge of that you know i'm just going to go through and i'm going to try to answer every point raised in this um really good video so my chat's gone a bit quiet or maybe it's not updating one second yeah my chat's gone a bit quiet i don't know if i've done something there wait 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 no no i don't understand confused sorry bear with me 
I'm not sure if that's still the last comment. If there's any, if anyone's commented in the last, <laughs> I don't know how long, I haven't had any updated comments recently. So that could just be me being paranoid. Maybe you guys are just really listening intently, but normally people are chatting away. So it's kind of distracting me that there's not been any updates in the chat. Um, I'll keep an eye on that. But I think at this stage, uh, let's get started. Um, everyone ready to get started? Let's go. Oh, quick poll, actually, before I do jump straight in. How many people have viewed my short I've got a short video about Queen T's bust. How many people have seen that? And obviously shorts are one minute max. So I just want to kind of put it out there. If you've seen the Queen T short that I put out, and this is it's quite an old one. Um, so it's about the bust, not about, not necessarily focused on my reconstruction, about the bust of Queen T. Has anyone seen that? Just put a little comment and saying yes or no, you've seen it. Okay, definitely not getting any up. Oh, there we go. It's just jumped back and I've just got about 50 comments that I've just jumped. So yeah, <laughs> great. All right, so, <laughs> all right, let me try. Let me try and catch up. Bear with me, guys. I just got to catch up and see if I'm missing, missing anything. Uh, okay, no buffering. That's good. All right, dark skin Caucasian. Okay, cool. Everyone's there. So a few people have seen it. So what I'm going to do to start off with, let's have a look at that short, I think. Yeah, let's have a look at it. I've just decided that. We're, I'm, I think it's better we see the get the full context of what's made this Eurocentrist so angry, okay? So it's better we get the context of that. So let me put put this short up and we'll let that be our starting point for this. So I'm gonna quickly pop that in. Now bear with me as I'm loading that up. Um, so also, I don't, I always say this, it's famous last words from me, isn't it? I don't expect this live stream to be too long. I'm hoping that's not because I wanted to get to bed before midnight and it's now half past 10 here. So that's the aim. But in saying that, I know I'm notoriously, notoriously bad at keeping that promise. So let's just see how it, how it kind of like, you know, how it works out. Oh, this is another thing that I forgot to mention. All right. So this is quite important. I have a second channel. So if you're live right now and you're not subscribed to that channel, I'm not going to Force you and say go and subscribe to that channel. But if you're one of my mods in the chat and you can put a link to my second channel, the Teak, the Teak, the King Mono, King Mono Show, that's the second channel. And the reason why I say that is because this video here, this kind of content, I don't want to put on my main channel. So I'm only live streaming it from here because obviously this is where my audience is. I've, no one would know about the live stream if I did it from the other channel. So I'm live streaming it for the main channel. But what I'm going to do is I'll end up chopping up the content that's comes out of this live stream I'm then posting it onto the new channel and then eventually I'll probably end up erasing this from this channel and then when I eventually get the new channel <laughs> over 1000 subscribers I think I'll transfer these kind of live streams when I'm doing like deep dives or debunking and stuff like that being a bit petty which I don't mind being to be totally honest with you sometimes I like being petty um when I'm doing that kind of stuff I prefer to do it on the King Mono Show channel um where rather than the main channel which I feel is becoming more of a a bit more of a a kind of you know it's a bit, it's a bit more smooth you know less rough edges on the, on the main channel so that's kind of thank you Kapuriki for sharing that so the link's in the chat Kapuriki just shared it um, and I'll be uploading extracts from this live stream, what comes out from it, onto the new channel. Okay, boom. Excellent. So let's go. So let's, um, I'm going to now show you that short. So bear with me. It'll take me about 10 seconds to get this up. Shorts. And I think this, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Here it is, okay. Boom, okay. Bear with me, we'll jump on the screen in a minute. I just want to pause it before it starts playing. Thank you, Sky King, for subscribing. And Sketcher, appreciate it. Many proponents of your... Okay, cool. I'm going to pull this on. So I'm going to pull the short onto the main screen. There it is. Centric Egyptology. Oh, can I rewind it? I can't rewind. You can't rewind shorts. Can you rewind? I oh, can you refresh. You can refresh. So that's easy. Uh, so I'm gonna refresh it. I'm gonna play it now, and then I'm gonna shut up and let it play for a minute. 
Many proponents of Eurocentric Egyptology have argued erroneously that the dark hue that has become synonymous with the bust of Queen T was the result of the natural darkening of yew wood used during its construction. However, this is demonstrably false in that with even a cursory observation, it is obvious that the bust has been deliberately varnished. This is reflected in the different colors shown in the bands of her crown, her eyebrows, her eyeballs, her pupils, and even her lips. In fact, the high sheen finish and visible brush strokes prove that this is not untreated wood, as is being implied, but rather an accurate and deliberate rendition of color chosen by a skilled artist. This is further supported in additional renditions of Queen T, showing her in the same dark brown tone, where multiple color tones are also present, proving the original color has indeed been preserved. That is why this rendition of Queen T is indeed accurate. Okay, so there you go. That's the short that I created. Now, I made this short a while ago. And those of you who are kind of regular on the channel will know I've done quite a few revisions of Queen T's face since then. So my latest reconstruction of Queen T actually doesn't look like the one you saw in that video anymore. Although I still do like that reconstruction, I'm not going to lie. But I think the current one that I've got is closer. Now, now you've got some of the context. Now, obviously... The person who's um, rebutted me, I believe it's a woman, but someone also told me it's a man who's pretended to be a woman, which I wouldn't put past them because you never actually hear their voice and they've never gone on camera. And I wouldn't put it past those Eurocentrists to do, to do like weird stuff like that, to be totally frank with you. Um, so I don't know what they are. I should probably just use that pronoun to be safe. Um, but <laughs> that's. Let, let, I want to get into the content now. So let, let's get into it and let's get debunking and let's, let's now get into the meat and bones of this. So I'm going to play this video, which I've downloaded. I've actually downloaded it just so I don't give them extra views. <laughs> Anyway, let me get started. Um, Many proponents of Eurocentric Egyptology have argued erroneously that the dark hue that has become synonymous with... So I'm just going to pause it there really quickly. So you'll notice everything about this statue literally destroys the Afro... Oh, by the way, my name on their channel is the Afrocentric, yeah? The Afrocentric narrative. Here is what they will never show you. So she's got some real deep secrets here that she's going to going to reveal here. All right. I'm just going to play it here. The bust of Queen T was the result of the natural darkening of yew wood used during its construction. However, this is demonstrably false in that with even a cursory observation, it is obvious that the bust has been deliberately varnished. This is reflected in the different colors shown in the bands of her crown, her eyebrows, her eyeballs, her pupils, and even her lips. In fact, the high sheen finish and visible brush strokes prove that this is not untreated wood, as is being implied, but rather an accurate and deliberate rendition of color chosen by... Okay, so before we get into her, this is where she gets in and, and attacks me. So I like to think up until that point, my proposition was quite clear wasn't it it was quite clear i believe this has been deliberately painted or varnished i actually think it was just a, a very thick kind of opaque varnish i would have said so a very co heavily colored varnish is what i'm leaning towards um as opposed to an actual like full paint but i made that clear in my argument quite clearly stating that there's brush strokes on it it has a high sheen finish and the rest of the bust is painted. Okay, so that's quite clear arguments that I've stated in the video. Let's see what he, she has to say. If it's not severely damaged statues or statues with broken noses, then it's unpainted wood statues. Okay, so here's the proposition that they're making here. Please do note this. Her argument is that it's an unpainted wooden statue. Earmark that, please. <laughs> This is a common theme among Afrocentrists. And yet no one, no, sorry, here we go. And, not, and yet not once during his rant did he offer any evidence proving that the statue of Queen T was varnished. So apparently I offered no evidence. And if you weren't clear about that. Not a single reference to substantiate his accusation. 
not one. Okay, so you guys heard that I, you, we watched the same video, didn't we, first of all? I made three, <laughs> I made three quiet, clear observations as to why it was varnished, okay? The first reason it was varnished was because there are visible paint strokes on it. The second reason why it was varnished is because it has a high sheen finish. And the third reason why it was definitely painted and it's not unpainted is because the rest of the statue is clearly painted from the headband to the lips, to the eyebrows and to the eye colors and the pupils. So that's three quite clear arguments and yet gaslighting, this is the way that Eurocentrist role, isn't it? She said there, I have a substance. So she's just like, I rolled along and said, oh, I was painted. I didn't say anything to substantiate it. This is the levels that we're dealing with guys. Don't worry, it gets worse, but I'm going to cook them really thoroughly because there's going to be no getting out of this when I'm done. Um, thank you, Black Rampage, for the 199. I appreciate you. You have patience. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I do. I have mad patience and I appreciate the fact that you appreciate my patience. You have to understand, I have shelved and bookmarked this idiot for such a long time. And I said to myself, don't, don't do it, just move just move on you not worth the time no you know what some of these people they have to get cooked they just it, we're just there now they, they're just gonna have to get it because some of this content is so terrible um carol i appreciate you you said keep doing what you are doing i appreciate you so much thank you guys for your very generous contributions i really appreciate it but anyway so let's substantiate my arguments now because i've i've made them clear but you know what we like on this channel we like to be very thorough so let's substantiate everything so my three premises, first one was the visible brush strokes, okay? So let's start off with the visible brush strokes and the high sheen finish. So I'm just going to quickly share an image with you guys. Which I'm sure you've seen before, by the way. So I'm going to share, because this one shows it a bit clearer, okay? If you're going to make an argument that something is unpainted, wood yep i'm glad you guys can see the same close-up that i'm showing you right now does that look like unpainted wood for you do we agree that there are visible brush strokes on this do we agree that this high sheen finish that i've just stated is quite clear for all to see wood does not shine unless it's varnished that's just the be all and end all it is impossible to make wood shine to this extent without either varnish or some kind of painting, okay? So it's quite clear that this is being painted. There are visible strokes. You can see visible stro brush strokes on the cheek over here, visible brush strokes over here, visible brush strokes beneath there. We also have lips that are a slightly different tint. Okay, so the lips have, are a, a much more blockier, kind of reddish brown. We have paint <laughs> in the eyebrows, paint, eyeliner, paint in the pupils. You can't just pretend you don't see all that and then say it's unfinished wood. I mean, what levels of stupidity are we dealing with here that someone would say that this is unfinished wood? How far do you have to be within your own realm of madness and Eurocentrism to call this unfinished wood. Now don't worry, we are just beginning to cook this. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> it's just absolutely ridiculous that they'll actually raise these arguments, okay? Someone's just mentioned obviously the whites of the eyes, which obviously I mentioned. You know, you think that you don't have to repeat this stuff. She has a gold band. I mean, there's clearly paint all over this bust. This is a finished painted bust. A monkey could see that, honestly. Like, this is absolutely... It's, a, it's the most asinine arguments you have to make when you're defending against Eurocentrists. Now, let's cook her some more, because this is not enough, because she goes on the fact that, oh, unpainted bust, unpainted bust. Well, let's just for shits and giggles, excuse my French, see what unpainted wood actually looks like. And wouldn't it be good, I don't know, to... I mean, just as a, you know, someone, as an observer, wouldn't it be good if, for comparison, we had a bust of, I don't know, let's say the same queen, 
maybe queen T that was actually unpainted wood for comparison. That would be really good. I wish that bust, oh, it does exist. So let's actually have a look at an actual unpainted wooden bust of Queen T because it actually exists. Okay, let's have a look at that and see what this looks like. And bear in mind, these busts of Queen T, of which there are numerous dozens, she doesn't use any of these in her video. <laughs> and you, you can understand why, because they all are going to offer Eurocentrist the same level of disappointment. So here we have an unpainted bust of Queen T with exactly the same wonderful African features that she always has. Undeniable that that is Queen T. The eyes are exactly the same. The lips are exactly the same. But quick little shout out to the community there. What do you notice is different between the color of the two busts? Okay, that's a pop quiz question. Can anyone tell me the difference between bust number one and bust number two? What's the difference, please? Anyone? What's the difference? And this is a wonderful bust. By the way, if you haven't seen this bust of Queen T, it is exquisite. I'll show you another view of it as well. Absolutely exquisite bust. But someone tell me the difference. And, and I'm going to wait for someone to give me the, the... I know it's a stupid question, by the way, but it's not rhetorical. I want someone to tell me what is the difference because we're going to rant about this just for a little bit. What is the difference between bust number one, which is painted, and bust number two that is unpainted? Someone said this one's much less brown. Yes, but I'm looking for keywords here. What does wood, and I say this as someone who has, I'm quite extensive in carpentry. If I showed you my sh studio now, I could show you lots of stuff that I've made from different types of wood. Range of colors, I'll take that. Okay, it's not the exact answer, but Mr. Know All, I will take that answer. It's the range of colors. The word I was actually looking for is grain. Okay, when a piece of wood is unpainted, what you will see is something called the grain. Okay, you also hear this described as veins and you can also get this thing called knotting. I know all this because I actually work with wood quite often. Okay, I've, I'm not going to go into why, but I know quite a lot about wood. All right, I could, and I'm not going to say pause for all of you out there. Okay, um, so when it comes to wood, you have really two kinds of wood. In the, like if you're looking at major kinds of wood, you have two kinds of wood. You have soft wood and you have hard wood, okay? Soft wood is wood that grows quite fast, okay? So as a result of growing fast, it never gets very dense, but as a result of growing fast, we have an abundance of it. So I'm just gonna give you this quick education because it's important for these Euro idiots to understand because they don't understand these really basic things. So soft wood grows fast, and as a result of growing fast, it has normally has quite spaced out veins because the veins or the grain that you see in wood is actually the yearly growth of the wood. So imagine you get a, a tree trunk and every year it expands, but then in the winter it kind of stops growing. Okay, and that's where the vein darkens and then it expands again. So softwood grows really fast pine, trees like that. That kind of wood grows very, very fast. But then you have hardwoods, and hardwoods grow very slow okay hardwoods grow slow and as a result of growing slow they end up being very dense and they have much finer veins and much finer grain now the wood that is used in a lot of ancient egyptian artwork which is you is actually a softwood but it's right on the precipice of being a hardwood so it's a very firm softwood so if i just zoom out on this so I'm just kind of giving you guys the actual, the little bit of the science of it. You can see the veins and can you see how the veins are quite relatively spread out in certain parts? That's very characteristic of this kind of wood, okay? But one thing that all wooden sculptures have in common is that you will always see veins. You will always see grain. It's impossible. It's what gives wood its character. So when you get a solid color, like the bust of Queen T, you know instantly by looking at it, oak is a hardwood, well done, absolutely. You know instantly by looking at the bust of Queen T that this has been painted and or varnished. Instantly, because there's no visible veining. It's impossible to have an unpainted bust that doesn't 
show or untreated wood that doesn't show some kind of vein i have a fine veins fine grain or wide grain and i could show you a million examples i won't waste your time but I'll sh let's see a couple of examples we can see obviously this one which is perfect because it's actually queen t so this debunks <laughs> the entirety of the euro stupidity argument oh, oh it's unpainted bus that darkened because you with darkens yes you with does darken and this is an example of you with darkening this is an example of you with darkening you still have veins it's quite clearly untreated wood. This is not an example of an untreated statue. This is an example of pain, staking, painting and touch up work that has taken place. I mean, the fact that we have to prove this to these idiots goes beyond me, honestly. Um, I'm just gonna quickly give a massive thank you to Pagan Print Princess. I'm guessing the two fives is a double S. So Pagan Princess, truth crushed to the earth will rise. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that very, very generous donation. And I'll just make sure that I actually got everyone there as well. I'm just going back because I think someone else gave me a really generous donation. Carol, thank you very much. She said, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, uh, is anyone else? Yes, there is. And... King, Errol just said, King, thank you for the professional way of bringing the truth to light in the US. They banned African history in school. Sheikh Antony would be proud. Thank you very much. I'll put your comment on the screen in a second. Um, I'm getting quite a lot on this. So people seem to be interested in this topic. That's cool. So anyway, I'm going to show you a few more unpainted busts because we got a whole video to get through here. But I do want to cook this idiot properly, honestly. Um, so I'm going to quickly just show you a couple more busts just to really press home the point because people don't understand the difference. So let's let's stay on the topic of Kemet and unpainted statues, okay? So we can really have a comparative distance. So I'm gonna show you this bust of Queen T again. I'm gonna show you from profile view actually, because this really is a beautiful bust. So I'm just gonna quickly open a new tab. I'm just gonna pull this over. So here we go. So here's the same bust, and I'm just gonna zoom in a bit there. Look at that wonderful profile view of Queen T in this bust. Wonderful profile view. Okay, it looks exactly like the other bust. What a lovely bust this is. Okay, so once again, like we discussed before, this is untreated, okay, untreated wood. You can see the veining throughout. You can see the grain throughout. Yeah, really, it's, it's not comparable. And then if we wanna just quickly switch up a little bit and move away from queen t let's have a look at maybe this random image because it's a different kind of wood just really quickly and then we're going to move on but i just want to let, let's let's bleager the point why not why not so i'm going to open this in the tab really quickly okay this is another example of untreated wood what untreated wood looks like okay so you can see this over here this dot that you can see over here this is called a knot Okay, so wood knots, so you also get them knots in wood as well. So that's an example of a knot. So you've got the grain showing, you can see the veins. The veins, like I said, tell you the, basically are the yearly growth pattern and the density of the wood will depend on how fast it grows, essentially. So now you've got that little bit of science to go with it. Okay, um, I think we're gonna move on now because yeah, the arguments get don't get any better, they get more stupid, but let's let's tackle them all. Okay, so there's my not one piece of evidence, okay? <laughs> let, let's, let's move on. So there is no evidence of varnish or paint employed as a medium. Well, I think we've just proven that absolutely false in any official description and is therefore undeniable confirmation that there was neither deliberate nor conscious act on behalf of the artist to portray the queen with painted skin surface. That's actually a lie as well, because there's plenty, if you was to look properly, that tell you that that has been varnished. I'll go through some of those sources a bit later. But in the explanation that I've already given as to why it's definitely been varnished, that already is the 
ball, the burden of evidence lies in your court. You have to prove that the artwork exists that is solid brown in colour, has no veins and no grain showing and is untreated. Find me that mythical piece of wood, okay? The ball is in your court. You need to find that because this, this bus can't be the only one that has reacted in this way and has turned a beautiful, solid brown <laughs> that looks exactly like skin colour. This can't be the only one. If you're saying wood does this all the time, we should be able to pull out every ancient Egyptian piece of artwork. Every comedic piece of artwork should be doing the same thing. Shouldn't they? They should all, you know, they should all look like this. All the untreated ancient Egyptian artworks. But I've already shown you one that was made at exactly the same time that doesn't. So therefore, your theory is very, very wanting. Um, Sabin or Sabin. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Thank you very much. You're essentially the only one away. You know what? You are spot on. You are absolutely spot on. That's a great comment. Eurocentrics only want to waste your time. And actually, this is one of, little side note really quickly. This is one of the main reasons why I didn't want to engage this concept, content. And I'll only do it on this channel. And I'm only going to do it being really silly just to have a bit of fun and to have a bit of a good time with you guys. They only want to waste your time. They don't have anything better to do. They're essentially you know flogging a dead horse <laughs> you know they're they're following something they don't truly believe so you'll find they have got much more time to engage afrocentrists than to actually engage in any of their own research everything that they do is about disproving afrocentrists that's what their entire belief system is based around whereas afrocentrists or people who are pro-african historians we're out there and we're actually finding cultural continuity, finding historical links, accessing parts of the spirituality if you're that way inclined, doing different things. And I'm not saying I'm an Afrocentrist, quote unquote. I'm just a independent researcher. I don't really tag onto any of these labels. But the point being that people who believe that Egypt was an African civilization have got better things to do than to engage idiots in arguments. And that's what happens a lot of time. I... As a quick you know, digression, I know I keep doing this, but I'm, I'm going to share something really quickly. Around 20 years ago, I spent a copious amount of my life on forums. I'm not going to lie. It was a very, very long time. And I used to argue back and forth with these people. And then I realized that the only people that was benefiting or being or have or being detracted from in these exchanges was the two people arguing. That's it. You're not going to convince them. They're not going to change their mind often you're not going to change your mind because you really think you're right and in the end you're just having an argument it's like and then people live for these arguments they wake up every day and they spend half of their day arguing on forums sorry but i've got better things to do if morals like this think they're gonna, gonna get me you know st stuck in these back and forth exchanges which is what she would love for me to do to give her channel some kind of like notice that's never gonna happen i will use your channel for mild entertainment and then I'll throw it away to the side and I'll forget that you exist just like I had done for the past several months and I thought you know what I need some new content for my new channel so that's what I'm doing right now and that's it really so there you go but thank you for that um, donation and that comment because both were on point um, okay let's crack on In his eagerness and willingness to point out contrasting colours, which has no relation to the actual skin surface, what? <laughs> the eyes, eyebrows, lids, lips or crown is further proof the artist intentionally avoided painting the skin surface. Sorry, because someone make that make sense. <laughs> what? This is Eurocentric logic. So just to kind of like before you get an aneurysm trying to understand what this person is saying she's actually saying that the artist has deliberately painted everything but the skin surface why would they do that why would they do that who has skin that looks like wood <laughs> what, what are you talking about <laughs> I missed that quickly. Let's quickly go back. I don't want to miss any of this idiocy. Well, 
What is falsely being asserted as varnish is actually wood grain and chisel markings. Do I need to say anything, guys? Yeah, so you've just seen us go through those complete comparisons between the busts of Queen T. If you need a, a little reminder, yeah, <laughs> a little reminder. Wood grain. Yeah, wood grain. Yeah, we see, we agree what wood grain looks like. It has clear vertical or horizontal lines, depending which way you carved across the wood. Yeah, dark light, dark light patterns. Yeah, wood grain. Wood grain. Oh, not wood grain. Okay, not wood grain. Come on, like <laughs> where is the grain? Now this is someone who is just literally deliberate. Uh, look, she's either there's two possibilities here. She could be just very stupid, which is a possibility, and I will not condemn someone for that. Sometimes people are just literally low intelligence, and so they might look at something like this and go, "Well, that looks like it." looks like unpainted wood but i actually think and i'm going to lean towards the fact that she's not stupid and i'm going to lean towards the fact that actually she's just deliberately being misleading okay that's the only thing that i can come across because you can't argue that it's just anyway let's keep going <laughs> guess what darkens over time so Here's a second argument. Varnish darkens over time. So going away from the, now going away from the it's unpainted, she's now going to argue, actually, it is varnished and varnish darkens over time. So therefore, it just looks darker than what the originally intended. So let's read the argument. Varnish darkens over time. Does the varnish darken with age? Okay, so this is obviously, she pulled this from Google, which is fine. Natural varnishes tend to darken and discolor with time, necessitating their removal and replacement. The removal of a varnish layer requires great skill and knowledge. We're going to talk about varnish removal later as well, because that's going to be a lot of fun listening to her contradict herself. Um, and should be only, only be undertaken by a skilled um, trained painting conservator sorry con conservator the replacement of a varnish is also not a simple matter so did you notice it says darken and discolor so darken okay that's one thing discolor is another thing okay discolor discoloration tends to be a lightening so essentially this is saying they can darken or lighten over time but i'm not gonna i'm not even gonna believe at that point Let's 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 just you know let's give her that one. Let's say varnish darkens over time. Let's see if that supports her argument. Um, Black Rampage, thank you. I appreciate you debunking Euro propaganda arms the next generation so they won't be programmed with lies. Absolutely. I guess there is a bit of value in that, so I appreciate it. And Solomon, I will and um, thank you very much, Solomon, for that. You haven't left a comment, but for that twenty dollars, that is very very generous, man. I really really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Really, really appreciate it. And so let's carry on having a look, yeah? So now she's talking about varnish, as Talia has just said. Yeah, she's talking about varnish now, saying that it discolours with time. Okay, cool. <laughs> now, okay, when clown, so now she's not calling me <laughs> Afrocentric anymore. My name now is Clown. <laughs> when, and she's, <laughs> she doesn't even use proper grammar. She's so angry. When clown... When Clown World argues for varnish on Queen T's face, um, they are literally arguing against their argument. So we are contradicting ourselves because varnish darkens over time. And therefore, by saying it's varnish, we've shot ourselves in the foot because it was supposed to be lighter before and now it's darker. Okay, let's, let's shelve and pause that argument because we have... Fortunately, we have several busts of Queen T. Several, not just one, numerous busts of Queen T. And I'm happy to look at all of them. Unlike you, unlike Eurocentrists who will try, who will dig and dig and dig and dig, go through a hundred statues, reject them all, break a few noses on the way, and then dig up one piece of faded stele artwork and say, this is the true image of Queen T or Ramesses actually people who believe in African Egypt are very comfortable with all of the portraiture and we're going to explore the portraiture to see if your statement has any veracity we're going to see that okay so let's let's move on
Okay, so here, here's where we start getting into the realm of just straight up lies. It's actually quite hilarious he's arguing for varnish. Egypt had only two colours for varnish, black and yellow. Hmm, that sounds, that sounds, that sounds dubious to me. I, I think, I think that's a lie. Me thinks that I've caught you in a bit of a lie there. Let's, let's see if there's any support for different types of varnish. Let's have a look, used in ancient Egypt. Okay, here's a good one. Okay, so let's have a look just to kind of like see if there's any truth in that last statement about there only being black and yellow. Because this is what they like to do as well. So you've heard Metatron make very similar statements like his one was slightly different. Well, Metatron's argument was um, Metatron's argument was, you know, Egypt had two colours. You know, red, brown and yellow. And that was it. And they had nothing in between. And that was the only colours they had. And these are all lies. They make this stuff up because it's not actually true. Let's see what actually is said about um, varnish in ancient Egypt. So here we go. Here's a, here's a resource. Uh, we can just have a quick read here. I'm just going to quickly zoom in so we don't miss this. Beeswax was used as a binding medium as well as a varnish or coating in ancient Egypt. The earliest certain use of beeswax as a binder occurs in the mummy portraits, which primarily originate in the fame region. Um, let's get to the colour because it does get there a bit of me. Oh, am I in the right place? One second. Sorry, I thought that highlighted part had the point I was trying to make. Um, bear with me. Might be moving a bit too fast here. You know, let me come back to that actually. Let me come back to that because we are live. And let me come back to that because I have to find that. So I think whilst it's playing, I'll see if I can find the exact quote. But there's a very cl clear quote stating that essentially had all of the tones in between. And I think I might have jumped across. Let me see. Gi egg. That's an oils. Um, and I can't bother to read all that article again. Not, not why everyone's online anyway. I'm going to come back to that. Bear with me. We will. I'm going to park that quote and I'll find it at some point. I'll do a quick find whilst we're playing it. So I'm going to quickly skip over that point. We will come back to it. Bear with me. Because I've lost the quote that I was going to show you guys. So let's... Uh, Let's keep it moving. I will come back to that point. But that is just, that's earmarked. We will revisit that. Don't worry. I'll find it. Noticeably, the face of T is not varnished black. <laughs> okay, so here's the argument. If you only have two colours, yellow and black, you're either going to varnish it black or you're going to varnish it yellow. Does that argument sound similar to you? Yeah. On the walls, wall art, stele art. Well, they're not painted jet black. So therefore, all of these dark brown people <laughs> must have been white people with tans or must be Arab people with tans. They can't possibly just be dark brown people. All of these reddish brown people must be Arabs with tans. They can't possi possibly just be all of these reddish brown people that were surrounded with in Egypt, they must be something else. So this is the same argument being made here. We need, if you're black, you have to be painted black. It's like, as black people, we're blind to the fact that we have <laughs> brown skin. <laughs> yeah, we just, we the moment we're black, you just grab the tar, grab the bitumen. Yeah, <laughs> just grab the bitumen, grab the tar and just slap it on the wall because we're painting black people today, yeah? <laughs> and, you know, it doesn't matter if you're light-skinned or dark-skinned or mid-skinned. When it comes to Eurocentrist, you are tar. And it's only depictions of tar that are depictions of ancient Egyptians. So this is the, the same school of thought that she's coming from, understandably. The face of tea is not varnish black, so arguing for varnish is not favourable. I mean, 
I, I will have to find that quote. And I, I, sorry, before the stream ends, I will have to maybe just let you listen to some music whilst I find it because I'm not letting her get away with that one because I do have the quote absolutely disproving that black and yellow nonsense. But just for the sake of kind of like keeping the flow going, I'm going to skip over it for a second and I'm going to come back to it. So yellow varnish darkens over time. We have seen this in the example in the previous video discussing the tomb of Nang. So this is where as a Euro essentially, she's gonna be jumping from thing to thing. So now, basically, she can't find an example of varnish being used on a bust or being used on a statue and it darkening. So now she's moved on to arguing that they varnished the wall art. So you know what the stele artwork in ancient e in ancient she's gonna argue. So we're all familiar with this wonderful image of Africans, okay? <laughs> we're all familiar with this image. All right, let's have a look. So this is the actual mural in Nak's tomb, TT52. Yes, at first glance, they appear to be extremely dark, but they take a good hard look. Do you notice anything? Let's see what she's gonna teach us. So she's given us a snippet of her of their feet where the paint has faded. Okay, so down by the floor, as you can imagine, maybe rising damp or I don't know, lots of other reasons. People walking past, brushing past, the paint has faded on the feet. Let's see where her Eurocentric logic has taken her. Apologies about loud loud music. Let me turn it down because it's actually jarring me as well. So she's pointing at the fact that their feet are a bit lighter, yeah? Unlike all the other women, these are the darkest in the tomb. The artist gave them a coat of varnish, which caused a darkening effect. <laughs> this is your essential logic. Originally, the woman would have been as light as their, as their feet where there is an absence of varnish. So this is the argument being made here that the lightness, once again, why can't I get rid of that frame? That's better. No, I can't. So I'm just trying to get rid of the frame so we can read it. So this is our argument. And by the way, Osiris.net that she's referencing here is gonna contradict her later, which is hilarious. So this website's got to actually contradict her later, which is absolutely hilarious. But the point that she's making here is that the, the picture was initially all light, but then they varnished and the varnish has caused a darkening. Yeah. So bear in mind when it talks about um, the source that she just gave us to say that varnish darkens over time was talking specifically about wood. Yeah, I was talking specifically about varnishing wood. Could you varnish wood? You don't varnish, yeah, wall art. Yeah, and it talks about the fact that varnish darkens over time. It was talking about the fact that the varnish on the wood would darken over time. But just like Eurocentrists do, let's now skip ahead with that logic now and just apply it to everything because it's a very convenient rule. So apparently, the application of varnish on their feet here or missing their feet has revealed the true color. This is the most bizarre argument I've ever heard in my life. The most logical argument, Occam's razor would say that the feet have lightened over time due to <laughs> the passage of time, no Egyptian artwork preserving its original color, literally none. It's, it's almost impossible to find Egyptian wall art that is original color. It's You can look on their legs. Is she gonna suggest that only the center of the legs were, were um, varnished and the edges of the legs weren't? You could see the, ridic the most ridiculous argument being made. And to be honest with you, I haven't even heard before this video the idea that wall art was varnished anyway. That seems like something that she just found on this single website and she's just kind of like floating with it. But it's, it's the most ridiculous argument. What a absolutely ridiculous argument. Oh, well, they've, they, the varnish has darkened these people. This, because these 
colours, these skin tones you see, they're not realistic at all, are they? They're supposed to be this kind of pinky, wheaty colour. And what's happened is they've darkened over time because the surface has been varnished. Did they varnish the bands as well? Because the bands are white. Did they varnish the, the dresses? Did they varnish the, the dress that this woman's in? Was that not varnished? Because the, that stayed perfectly white throughout. From head to toe, these dresses are still white. So how is it that these dresses, which I'd imagine would be varnished as well, have not suddenly turned brown as well? Did they only varnish the skin? Like There's no logic to this argument. There's zero logic to this argument. So I see the words you would and so does everybody else. So she's now going to argue that going back to the you would argument. Nowhere does it state the skin of the statue is painted or varnished. Only the delusion could hope based on expert analysis and that not of a keyboard quack. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> let's read that again. Nowhere does it state the skin of the statue is painted or varnished. Only delusional could hope. Based on expert analysis and not of that of a keyboard quack, thank you very much, the skin surface is represented with unpainted u wood. So she's going back to the unpainted u wood. Unpainted u wood. We've already, we've, we've, we've bedraggled that. We're not even going to go over that now. That, 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 that argument is, is dead in the water. And this is based on the fact that when you go on certain sites, they will give you a material list, okay? And... When it suits her argument, she'll take these material lists very, um, very, very um, literally, even though, you know, they haven't spelt kingdom correctly here, but we'll ignore that. So New Kingdom, Dynasty 18, you would silver, <coughs> gold and faience inlays. OK, so based upon that, because they haven't listed paint, yeah, because they haven't listed paint or varnished, she says they can't that it can't be painted or varnished. So are her eyeballs also unpainted natural you would? Are her eyebrows unpainted you would? I can see a few people posting <laughs> headache emojis. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. This is the stupidity we're dealing with. Are her lips unpainted you would? Yeah. I mean, I mean what, what, what are we doing here? This is the level of stupidity that we're going through. We're going to actually argue that this doesn't have any paint on it anywhere does it say does it list white paint anywhere no it doesn't this is what you call i i don't know what you call this i, I would call it pedantic but it's actually beyond the point of you know pedantry if that's the word and it's just gone into a whole new realm of just aneurysm you know just just a bizarre person guess what else darkens over time and this is where let me guess you would let's see what all hardwoods will undergo the natural aging process and change colour over time with exposure to UV light and oxygen. Yes, we know that because we looked at an untreated bust earlier, didn't we? Also, what she doesn't seem to understand is that U wood is what she's arguing for is not classified as a hardwood. U wood is actually classified as a softwood. So even with your own ridiculous and stupid arguments, you can't even get the basics right okay you it is a softwood it is on the harder scale of softwoods i'll give you that but it is a softwood so therefore you should have got a better definition than this but yes notice it says hardwoods will undergo natural aging process and change color over time with exposure to uv light in general while lighter woods tend to become a bit darker and richer woods that begin dark will lighten up and unfortunately for her you would sits right in the middle <laughs> so you would neither a dark wood nor a light wood it just sits right in the middle or this wood how do you think i feel yetunde i'm a guy sitting here talking about wood yeah thinking do i have to say pause every single second do you understand what i'm saying this is this is a lot it's a lot man <laughs> 
I'm glad you guys appreciate this because this is a painful job that I have here. <laughs> You would darkens over time with age and exposure. Why ideologues are in denial of this basic fact is beyond reason and logic. Yep, you would does darken over time. We looked at you would. But you know what? Paint and varnish is paint and varnish. And that bust is definitely deliberately painted. So... Three and a half year... For real, three and a half K year old aged wood in different lighting no it's just different exposure darling yes yeah, not a big deal what's what's the point trying to make they're both black africans <laughs> now you notice this is really funny so now she's posted a, a picture of you for the first time side by side comparison she's tried to find the piece of you yeah that has the least amount of veins and grain because of how stupid our argument is so let's let's get well even this one yeah you know, she's blur you know got the most blurry low res image she could find because she knows the higher resolution the image the more stupid she's gonna look. <laughs> so. In fact, if we compare Queen T's family members that have been intentionally painted on either wood or stone, they fall in close line with the colour of you wood. They also fall in close line with black people. <laughs> What's the short point? You're a mad woman. Now, let's let's do this because this this is gonna this is where it starts getting more fun now. Okay, so we have here Nefertiti, okay, which is if not an entirely faked bust, which is probably where i'm leaning now and i have a documentary coming out on this there's many many books and this is not an afrocentric thing nefertiti was declared declared a fake before afrocentrism even existed <laughs> yeah they knew that this was fake and people were already investigating it then we have queen t okay who i, I mean i don't know why you've put that there that's clearly dark brown then we have the head of nefertem which I've recently done a reconstruction of. This is King Tutankhamun and the head of Nefertem. Now, this out of about, I don't know, 200 bus shabtis of Tutankhamun is the only one where he's depicted in this slightly orangey colour. Two reasons for that. One, it's clearly faded, which I've proven if you want to look at my reconstruction of the head of Nefertem. You can see where it's... In fact, I could play that for you. Maybe I'll play that for you later. Maybe I'll play that for you. Do you want me to play that for you now as a little bit of a break of this woman's stupidity? Who wants to see if I, I'm going to take the first vote. <laughs> Who wants to see my quick, it's a one minute short, well, one minute short of my reconstruction of the head of Nefertem. If I get a positive, yes, I want to see it. I'll put that on next as a break. If someone says no, I'll keep going and I'll ignore that. Who wants to see my reconstruction of the head of Nefertem? Gosh, we've got, we've got a delay here. So I'm going to wait for you guys to catch up. Uh, in that time, actually, in the meantime, I'm going to say a big thank you to Angel over here for this wonderful donation. I really, really appreciate you, Angel. Thank you so much. I'll appreciate that, Stephen. Absolutely do send them. But I'm waiting to get some feedback. I'm waiting to get some feedback on if you guys want to see my reconstruction of the head of Nefertem. Because I'll do that as a little bit of a break of the monotony. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sorry, they just come through. So I had a delay. All of you guys have been saying yes for the past two minutes. <laughs> so I could get a delay on my chat. All right, so let's get a reconstruction. Let's get that going. I'm going to quickly um, show that video. It'll take me a second to pull that up. Let me... Boom, boom. So I've got so many windows open, I do get a little bit lost. Here. Let's just, I'll just browse my channel right in front of you guys. No need to get precious about this. Should be near the top. Uh, here it is. So let's have a quick look at this.
Using available images of the bust as references, I restored the surface and tones and texture using... Is that the start? That might be the start. Oh yeah, it does start in a weird place because it's a snippet from a longer thing, but I'll let it play, so... Using available images of the bust as references, I restored the surface and tones and texture using cloning. The result was this far more naturalistic and authentically toned bust. It is also most consistent with the numerous busts, statues and schwabtis of the boy king. Consistency is a key theme in comedic art. Having this view of the bust available, I was able to create a lifelike reconstruction of what the boy king may have looked like when this bust was created. This view of the boy king is unique because out of all of his busts, this is the only bust that depicts him at such a youthful age. From the reconstruction, I would approximate the age of Tutankhamun to be around nine years old when the artwork was constructed. Tell me what you think of my process and the final result. Okay, so... I'm just going to pause it there really quickly because this is one of the few points that I want to make. So the head of Nefertem, which she's referenced there, you can clearly see the dark brown patches where it's faded. Okay, So the dominant colour has become this kind of orangey brown. And one of the things that I mentioned in the reconstruction is the reason why this is emphasised is because they've actually retouched the black part. So I posted, if you look at the long version of that Tutankhamun reconstruction video I've done, so if you haven't, have a look at that. It's the, I've done three, construct, three reconstructions of Tutu Carmen in one video. It's a long video. If you haven't watched it, I please, I do advise you to have a look at it because it's a really good video. Um, but the point I was making was that this black eyelid and black eyeliner has been retouched since it was found. It was made black again. And what that does is it gives the illusion that what you're looking at here was the target colour. If this was just faded like everything else was faded, your mind would be able to kind of like arrange the colours based on how much the eyebrows and the eyeliner had faded. Okay, does that kind of make sense? So you you would adjust it. So even though it's light, you would still see it in its true colour. But because they, you know, decide they got to touch up certain parts of these busts, it creates a little bit of a kind of confusion in your mind where you then go okay well that this is the target color and this was never the target color everything's faded from the hair up there which should have been black to the around the face over here okay where you can see that kind of like dark brown and that's why i took that approach when i reconstructed it okay that's why i took that approach so i say all that to say this back to back to crap now sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> back to the rubbish now um so we've got nefertiti which is a an, a known fake it's a known fake. okay look let's say we're 50 50 okay i think the evidence is 90 percent on the fact that it's a fake but let's say it's 50 50 you can say it's a fake you can say it's real fine let's say nefertiti's real it really makes changes nothing let's say the bust of nefertiti's real changes nothing because just like with queen t there are dozens of other busts of nefertiti that this woman would never show because they all show her looking far more African. But then we obviously have the bust of Queen T here, which is very famous, but there's num numerous other busts of Queen T that she won't share. We have the bust of um, Tuzukam in the head of Nefertem when he was a child. We have several others when he's grown up. All of them depict exactly the same African skin tone. And then I, I don't know what she was even thinking posting this picture of Akhenaten. Like, what is she seeing? <laughs> like, what, what is she seeing? Is, it, is it, this slightly faded bust of Akhenaten, okay? This very slightly faded bust of Akhenaten, regardless of how you view it, depicts an African man. I don't know what she was thinking posting this up. And that colour is nothing like that colour of wood that you've put behind, which is so... Sh I mean, this is her point. The point. Her point here is that all of these people here resemble wood. I mean... The, Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say too much. Let's, let's play on. <laughs> she, she, she actually wrote it down regardless. Out of all of these, this is easily the most painted <laughs> of, of all the ones that are shown. Quite easily. Painted wood, okay? Yeah, it is painted wood and faded and shown about six different tones just on the skin surface alone. 
painted limestone, yes, it's painted and clearly faded to the point where we can see the limestone through the skin, but still looks like an African man and still looks nothing like the colour of wood. Absolute moron. But anyway, let's keep, let's go on. So these are now a mixture of reconstructions. Now this is where I almost had a laughing fit when I saw this, I'm not gonna lie. Why, why did I have a laughing fit when I saw the first reconstruction? Someone please tell me. I wanna see if anyone knows why I had a laughing fit when I saw that. <laughs> oh man, this is good comedy. Someone tell me, why did I have a laughing fit when I saw this first reconstruction, please tell me. <laughs> what a fool she is, someone just said. Come on, I need the answer, guys. Come on, I can't keep pausing my live stream. I know someone's probably written in there. Someone tell me, why am I laughing about that first reconstruction she posted here? This, this one over here. Okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna guess there's a delay and then all your comments are gonna appear at one time. So I'm gonna just tell, I'm gonna jump in and say why. Thank you, Kapruki, <laughs> that's not mine. Okay, so this first reconstruction she's posted here on the left, is it even my reconstruction? This is done by Bas Utowicz. I have a video about it. Thank you. Though everyone who, who can see the comments, okay? This is not my reconstruction. This is Bas Utowicz. Bas Utowicz is a European, okay? He just happens to have reconstructed Nefertiti as a black woman which is enough in her world to get you labeled an afrocentrist you know <laughs> she probably has a real hate boner for him now yes he's a this is not my reconstruction and it's a good reconstruction i like it um but it's not mine it's got nothing to do with me um but it's good nonetheless and i don't understand what her issue with this reconstruction even is because if she was going for that wood color i'd say this is probably the closest thing to wood out of everything that's on the screen bizarre bizarre lady yes this is my reconstruction which looks exactly like that one cool this is my king tart which obviously wasn't modeled on this head of nefertim which is when he was a child why don't you put up one of any of the adult king tart statues like you know i don't know the funerary guards you could have put up there you could have put up there the golden mask of king tart you could have put up any of his shwabtis why didn't you put those up because you know for a fact, you know for a fact that those look exactly like my reconstruction. And then finally, she's chosen my, this is Josa. This isn't even my Akhenaten reconstruction. This is King Josa. So, you know, I mean, she's not even getting her, her criticisms correct here. Just literally all over the place here. So two out of four, two out of four, well done. <laughs> You know, wrong person and completely wrong reconstruction artist there. You know, this, I mean, she's all over the place. This is absolutely hilarious. Photoshop imaginary fiction. Thank you. <laughs> These are replicas, okay? These don't exist. So imagine, this is the lengths that Eurocentrists will go to. And so if you haven't seen this live stream now, she's now moving to another one. This is my live stream where I talk about the hair of Queen T. And I go into a massive rant about these two statues. Now, if you're not familiar, these two statues are available, or sorry, are available to view in a museum in America. I believe it's the Museum of Boston. I haven't actually double checked since I made this video because um, I'm, I'm so over it, okay? And these two are basically supposed to be reconstructions or kind of like, a revisiting of the Queen T bust to say this is what they truly look like before the varnish darkened. So as stupid as this like girl who's made this video is, she does have some Eurocentric backing. Do you understand? This is there's there's clearly Eurocentric backing here where these people will create these ridiculous arguments. Now obviously I have massive aversion to or, everything they've done about this because everything's just been done in such a deceptive way so i'm going to quickly list my problems with these two busts because they are quite pronounced and it's really important that i kind of share to you my many problems with these so first of all they've totally altered the color of the skin which is you know it just why would you do that okay and if you're going to go on the basis and your argument is that you know you want to keep them wood colored then why haven't you kept them wood colored why have you painted them yeah, these are not 
this is not natural wood. There's no grain showing. This is a painted surface. So they've painted it this kind of goldy wheat color. Next, they've actually changed the features. So you can see they've made the nose straighter, pointier, narrower. They've made the lips smaller. Once again, why would you need to do that if you're just trying to create replicas? Next, you have you see the two headrests, okay? So they did a scan of the bust of Queen T and they realized underneath the kind of like the latest kind of afro shaped one underneath the afro shaped one is a a bust or at least a the headpiece she had on would have been the cut so if you watched my hair documentary you would see the the cut headdress and the cut headdress is simply a hair wrap for afro hair <laughs> that's the bottom line you know it's the only thing that could provide that kind of shape some kind of afro hair in some form so it's either loose afro hair or afro hair in the form of kind of locks but it takes thick and body filled hair to be able to fill up the cat okay and then we have the blue crown as they've done it here and they deliberately have shrunk the size of the crown, which is another thing that really irritates me because we can see the shape of Queen T's headpiece or the Afro, however you want to call it, which I do believe is covered in blue beads. And I've done a reconstruction. In fact, I'll show you my reconstruction of what I think the um, of what I think Queen T would have looked like in her last iteration. So just bear with me. I'm quickly going to pull that on the screen. Bear with me, it won't be long. Oh, that'll be in the crowns, won't it? Um, content. I'll be one second. Don't worry. Don't switch off. Here it is. Um, So here it is, the queen, the queen T in the crown completed, okay? And one of the reasons why I have a, a massive problem, because to me, just to be very clear, I've, even from my first reconstruction of Queen T, I had her having looped braids, and that was based on the fact that I believe she had quite long hair. To me, it doesn't matter if her hair was plaited, or loose beneath the crown, the shape that it conforms to, this final shape, which is exactly the same shape as the shape of the bust, this shape can only be achieved by Afro hair. And that's why I always describe it as the Afro, okay? Not because necessarily the bust itself was depicting Afro hair, it would have been covered, but the, the shape it was conforming to is the shape of an Afro. This is not a shape that is possible outside of Afro hair. You must have Afro hair in one form or another to be able to achieve this hairstyle. So this is my latest bust of Queen Teen that I've done with the blue crown on. And you can see the shape of it. Now, the reason why, once again, going back to this, they clearly made it much smaller. Even so, it's still a hairstyle that they can't achieve. Let's make that very, very clear. But they've made it much smaller and made it just seem like it's just the crown. So... I've got so many problems with this. This is just clearly, clearly deception to try and push forward this kind of Arab-centric viewpoint. But that is not what Queen T looks like. And we have numerous busts. In fact, let's do a bust digest now. I think it's really important that we understand exactly what Queen T looked like. So let's just have a bit of a bust digest of Queen T so that we can get rid of all of these ridiculous arguments because, you know, apparently... All of those colors weren't right and Queen T doesn't look like that and this, that and the other. So let's look at the various portraits of Queen T as they're made available to us. So let's start off with... Is this going to crash? Oh, it's gone. Okay, let's start off with this wonderful bust of Amenhotep III and Queen T. I mean, I haven't seen a more African couple, <laughs> I don't think, in my life. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you if you if you want to try and claim that they these two are anything but Africans, that's totally up to you. But 
these are colossal busts as well, by the way. So, you know, it's hard to get the features wrong when you're making a colossal bust, isn't it? You know, it's it's too big, <laughs> you know. Um, let's move on. Let's see. Uh, do we have any other statues or portraits of Queen T? Let's move on. Let's 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 try this one. I mean, this one's a really nice one because it's like. How you, how you got to explain away these features? Have you seen this bust of Queen T? I wonder why she didn't use this bust of Queen T in her video. You know, the mind wonders why. Why do you think she avoided this particular bust of Queen T? It's a lovely bust, isn't it? Beautiful bust of Queen T, very detailed. Let's look at it from side view as well. Let's not just look at it from the front because I think the, the front view is cool, but let's have a look at side view. Ooh, that is a that is some subnasal prognathism showing there. <laughs> I mean, that is that is the most African face I think I've ever seen. And just to be clear about what subnasal prognathism here, I want you to see over here is the front of her cheek, okay, and this is the front of her lips, okay. So that is pronounced subnasal prognathism there, because you measure it from the front of your cheek to the front of your lips. That is pronounced. That is pronounced. Like, um, if I was to put a comparative for that kind of subnasal prognathism, this would be my comparison. Okay? That would be my comparison. So you can see where the cheek is and where the lips go. That's a comparative image for that level of subnasal prognathism. We could also have a look at maybe an image like this. Okay, that's a very good, strong comparison for that level of subnasal prognathism cheek to the front of the lips this is only achievable amongst africans okay that kind of level of subnasal prognathism that's being depicted in this very genuine bust of queen t okay very genuine bust of queen t is only available in africans are we done are we done yet no we're not done we're not even halfway done let's keep going let's have a look at more bus of queen t i found this one which is from a private collection this is a wonderful bust of queen t and by the way anyone saying that if you don't have subnasal prognathism you therefore aren't african that's not how it works okay i explained this before with african phenotypic diversity africans being dominant have full range of phenotype access so please take any of those asinine arguments and take them elsewhere what that essentially means is you can have substantial subnasal prognathism or you can have zero subnasal prognathism. Both are African traits. However, outside of the African continent, they do not have access to certain traits such as extreme dolicocephaly, um, subnasal prognathism. These are exclusive to Africans, but they're not restrictive to africans because we are not recessive we are dominant when you're dominant you have access to the full range okay so just make sure that you understand that difference please okay so now i'm posting silly comments about well i guess these people can't be you know can't be african because they don't have subnasal prognathism no it doesn't work that way i'm afraid i've already explained my brother blood brother oldest brother same family <laughs> yeah brother same yeah he has no subnasal prognathism and he has thin lips, okay? He has a very, I already said before, very tootsie phenotype. And I'm his younger brother and I have, I wouldn't say substantial, I have mild subnasal prognathism, okay? We're brothers. And we exhibit completely different facial cranial phenotypic traits. You can do that. Africans are able to do that. So just make sure you, you get that clear, okay? All right, so um, let's uh, so let's keep it moving. Um, so yeah, and whoever made that statement about pseudo, I think you need to get your suit. You need to get yourself straight because I think you're pseudo. Yeah, <laughs> you get uh, understand a little bit about African phenotypic diversity, then come back and you know come back in the chat and say what you got to say. Okay, um, so let's keep it moving. Um, 
let's get some more busts of queen tea because we're not we're not even halfway done yet this is another bust of queen tea and this one's beautiful because it blows out the water this idea that the color was accidental and i bet you she's never seen this bust as well wonderful bust of queen tea one second let me put it on the screen so this one I actually found this one actually belongs in a private collection okay so you can see there the preservation of a very beautiful deep dark brown on this bust of queen tea okay let's have a look on the side once again the same exactly the same woman and i think i've got another view this is a better view so look at that this is another bust of queen tea a little known bust of queen tea once again all and what's important to note as well is all the bust of queen tea that i'm going to show you are contemporaneous busts okay so these were busts that would have been created during her lifetime so it's really important to note that because that's going to become a very important sticking point that seems to be ignored by the detractors let's keep it going i want to show you a couple more busts of queen tea a few more let's just keep it going you know we've started we've started so we'll finish uh It's gone okay just showing another one i'm sure many of you have seen this bust of queen tea she's got that very iconic look this one looks almost it's dated probably almost in line with the famous bust that we reference exactly the same expression should we talk about the fact that this bust is kind of made out of that same granite compound that's been used in the armana lineage but this one is actually darker than the ones used for the Armana princesses. It's slightly darker. And I don't know, it, it begs the question, was the selection of this color deliberate? I can't argue that because this is stone at the end of the day, this is untreated stone, but was the selection of the stone, which just happens to be exactly the same dark brown that she seems to be using for all of her artworks, was that deliberate? Was it deliberate? I don't know that's that that's the question is it's, it's quite it's quite an interesting question to put out there so um is that are we done with our queen tea digest i just want to see if there's any more images of queen tea that i wanted to put out at the moment uh yeah let's have a look at the jade one actually let's have a look at the jade one i haven't i haven't yeah let's pull this one up i don't know why i didn't show you this one this is a, a brilliant one that she, and I don't know why she avoided this one. I mean, why not? I mean, if you're doing a very honest digest about what Queen T really looked like, and I'm just some big Afrocentrist thief, then let's let's put them out there. Let's put them out there. Let's let's get everyone to look at the several busts of Queen T and to make their own decision about whether or not this is an African woman or not. Okay. I don't know. You decide. What do you think? What do you think when you see that face, guys? Once again, very consistent bust of Queen T. Okay. This one, nose has survived, thankfully. What do you think of this bust? This lovely jade bust of Queen T. What do you think of this one? Hmm? I wonder why she avoided this one. Does anyone, any answers in the comments? Why do you think she avoided this wonderful jade statue of Queen T? Why did she avoid this one? Ooh. Oh, Oh, dear. <laughs> oh dear you know it's 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 quite funny and it's quite ironic that in a criticism of my video where she was supposed to be you know breaking down my deception she didn't just use other busts of queen t to disprove me mm. i wonder why i wonder why she avoided all of the contemporaneous artwork and you're going to see a little bit later the artwork she actually settles on which is hilarious but anyway i could show you some more but I want to save a little bit for later because we need we need stuff to to revisit. We need some stuff. In fact, let me let me put one more up there. Actually, this is a this is a good one as well. So let's put one more up. I'm gonna put one more up before we go. There we go. How about that one? Lovely that one as well. I mean, you could make you could make the argument this one more so than the other you could make the argument that this one is almost untreated i mean it still looks like there's some there's been varnish or something that's rubbed off but this is closer you know at least you've got a little bit of grain showing through this one unfortunately for her it doesn't make her any less african looking <laughs> i mean 
<laughs> Look at these busts of Queen T. Why didn't you use any of these to make your point? And I'm like, I'm I'm the delusional one, right? I'm the delu I'm I'm the delusional one. Okay. Anyway. Let's keep it moving. All right, so we're gonna carry on watching the video. We're halfway now, but don't worry, we'll we'll really speed up. We'll speed up now. Understand how low and how desperate low desperate basking in bitterness and jealousy that's apparently what i am yeah because i'm because i'm indignant about those two ridiculous busts that we that were put at the front of the museum um i'm bitter and jealous the brigade of hopeless <laughs> hopeless and miserable <laughs> attempted to claim everyone and everything under the sun except themselves not try to claim anything not actually try to claim anything just say if someone looks like an african dresses like an african talks an african language has an African body, has African DNA. I'm just going to call him an African body. You know, there you go. This is what low and desperate looks like. From this to this. Two out of four. Well done. <laughs> this is what you got. So this, I'm low and desperate because I make busts that look like the actual people. Okay. These never existed. Usurp, deface, and replace. What? what how, how did these never exist? Is she even going to make... And this is... In fact, it's really important to note this at this point, yeah? Did you notice how I made an entire tirade about why I didn't like those busts? Okay, I did it on that live stream and I'm doing... And I've done it in this live stream as well. Okay, I said quite clearly, I don't like these busts because... And then I listed all of the things... I don't like the fact that they've tampered with the features. I don't like the fact that they've changed the color of it. I don't like the fact that the head redresses that they've put on there are not the correct size, etc., etc., etc. I've made all those arguments. Notice how all she's done is insult, but not given any justification as to why what they've done was the right thing, which is that tends to be the Eurocentrist way, you know, just absolutely delusional. <laughs> Obviously, the big afro, which we So she got a little snippet of me saying the big afro, okay? Which is a statement that I make a lot about. Once again, I've said the shape of Queen T's crown. I always refer to it as an afro because it's in a perfect afro shape. But you'll notice in all of my reconstructions, I've never just depicted it as a loose afro. Because if you look at the crown itself, it looks like it was designed to be covered. But you can't escape the fact that it's African hair. It is an Afro, regardless. Okay, you can put a wrap on an Afro and it's still an Afro. Or it's still African hair that puts believers. Just like if you watch my video on crowns, when people wear things like the cut crown or they wear even a skull cap crown, these crowns are conforming to the shape of the hair. So I'll always refer to them as the shape of the hair that sits beneath. So, yeah, Afrocentrists love making fools out of themselves, apparently. <laughs> Desperation comes in the form of confusing a blue headdress as an Afro. Nope, never had that confusion, thanks. Now, this is where she's posted, and I've already posted this image if you've watched my live stream several months ago. The blue beads that are in the headdress and also just to be clear one of the reasons why I do believe this was covered is because if you look at the front but also if you look at the patterning so it's really important that I kind of communicate this I know a lot of people think it's it's just the depiction of hair I'm of the impression that if it ever if that ever was the case it was covered at some point and that's because I've actually zoomed in had a look at the texture and that texture there does suggest that this was a some kind of a sticky or adhesive surface that had the beads stuck in it. So this is one of the reasons why I always had the intention of doing the blue crown to show the shape. But the bottom line is, regardless, and I have to make this very clear, regardless of this, whether or not this depicts an actual, the actual hair as opposed to a crown, this shape is only achievable through African hair only achievable through African hair so this is what I have to make very very clear this shape that the crown finally conformed to was only achievable through African hair 
So I always describe it as the Afro. I always say to you, well, you know, she has this very large Afro. It, 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 I'm not going to take that back. That's, you know, it absolutely is an Afro. It might not be a physical Afro being depicted, but it's Afro hair being depicted. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just having a quick look at the bear with me at the comments because I haven't had a chance to look at them for a while. I want to make sure I haven't missed any donations as well. Just bear with me, guys, and I'll get I'll get cracking again soon. No, I don't think I did. All right, cool, excellent. And don't worry, guys. I have earmarked that varnish point, the black and yellow one. Before you guys go today, we are going to tackle that point. But anyway, let's move on. So, yes, this is the only point in this video where I'm going to say, well, yeah, OK, fine. Yeah, that is it's a blue crown, but I would I've never been against that. It's still the shape of an afro. <laughs> Yes, we understand that. Now, this is the alleged x-ray. And what's wonderful about this is the fact that, once again, she's throwing this on the screen. And this is kind of like a, well, have a look at this, Afro said. Just look what lies beneath. Well, all you've proven is two things. You've proven two things. Thing number one that you've proven is that underneath her current kind of like version of the crown she looks even more african because <laughs> that's just like what the heck that's do you i mean do you look at that face and see a european or something like the, she looks even more african and the second thing that's quite important is that whether or not she had to wearing the cut crown or she's wearing a blue crown that they did on top these are all afro hairstyles that lie beneath the cat crown is the most voluminous crown there is. I've got a whole documentary in it, so please do watch it if you haven't watched it. It's Afro hair that lies beneath. So you've proven nothing other than the fact that over the course of time, Queen T's hair grew and they modified her statues to show that her hair grew. Well done. Round of applause. You've noticed that Queen T's African hair got longer as she got older. Spoiler alert, all Africans' hair gets long. Well, actually, I say that my hair's actually full. <laughs> doesn't work. But most African women's hair gets longer, okay? They do different hairstyles. You've proven nothing, okay? This CT scan does nothing but confirm African Egypt. I just want to say a quick thank you to those two donations that just came in very quickly. Turn yourself up and the video you're watching down i did though i'm gonna i'm gonna turn it down some more thank you for that little bit of advice um draga and i really appreciate the two dollar donation and it's a human rights violation to claim they aren't black a violation on our self-autonomy self-determination and right to self-govern absolutely well it's just it's, a, it's an outright blood bloody lie as well it's just so you have to be in i mean it's funny they use the word delusional for us we're looking like i said we as Africans are able to look at the entirety of what's provided to us in terms of ancient Egyptian art. We've looked at at least six, seven, maybe eight busts of Queen T. All of them depict her as an African woman. We all feel comfortable. We put them on the screen and we're like, wow, that's a lovely bust. Look at her. What gorgeous queen. She looks at them and goes, oh, I can't show that one. That one looks too African. I can't show that one. I need to find, well, well please, someone show me a white looking bust. I mean, get a life. Honestly. <sighs> anyway, let's keep going. Under what we now see, Queen T wears a cut headdress. Yes, we know what that's called, um, which signifies her status as wife of Amenhotep III. What would have originally been two gold clips is where her crown would have been worn, adorned by Uraeus. Well done. You've said something correct. Excellent.
this is what the statues would have looked like. That's typical Eurocentrism because I said so. No, it's not what the statues would look like because even between the CT scan over here, just can we just all have a look at the prognathism? Look, we can see it even from the front, the way her lips are pushing forward. We can see the broadness of her bottom lip. We can see the cheekbones, the, way, the structure of that face is completely different to the structure of these faces that you've posted here. Completely different. Completely different. <laughs> and then she's posted a piece of wood. This is the even unpainted wood. But she has to, she needs this to be correct now. Darling, these, this is not unpainted wood. This, these are painted, both of them, okay? They're both painted. Neither of these are unpainted, untreated wood. So even the Eurocentrists that you're relying on to substantiate your point are contradicting you because they're showing you painted surfaces. So you're an idiot, <laughs> basically. <laughs> you put in commentary on top of the fact is not gonna change the fact that neither of these are unpainted. Okay, they're both painted. Three and a half thousand years to darken. So everything, so it had three and a half thousand years to darken everything but the eyes. Yeah, the eyes stayed the same. They didn't darken, did they? And this is what her mummy looks like. Let's have a quick digest of what she thinks her mummy looks like. Okay, so this this is quite entertaining. Scan. Okay, so this is not this is a, a, a CGI scan of which you could put whatever colours you like. This is completely blown out. So this has just been overexposed massively to try and make the hair look red. And by the way, Queen T does not have red hair, even though if she did have red hair, it wouldn't mean anything because it experienced chemical destabilization. OK, it's actually brown hair that she has, but we're not going to go into that into too much detail now. And then she's showing these other busts. And I guess the point that she's trying to make is that, well, look, she has long wavy hair. So therefore, she was definitely a European afraid not okay let's 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 explore why this is not the case let's look at the actual earliest pictures of queen t and i've shown these before let me close down some of these windows actually otherwise it's going to start dragging dragging and lagging thank you for your patience guys okay so here we go. These early pictures of Queen T you will not find anymore. And you'll notice, and I've said this before, I believe that it has been tampered to a degree, the bust of Queen T, because I believe they've shaved the front of the hair to kind of get rid of, you can see the kink there that exists at the front of her hair. You can see that doesn't exist anymore, okay? And that's actually depicted on both sides if you see the early images of Queen T's mummy. That being said, also, one of the things I made very, very clear in previous videos, and I'm just going to share it really quickly now because we're on the topic, is the fact that the when queens were buried, they were always buried with their hair in two very large tripartite separations. Okay, And I'm just going to give you an example of what that looks like. So just bear with me. This will take one second. Um, which live stream was it? You know what? Let me um pull up ammo sniffer to that. Um, no, no, the, the best one is. Sorry, just bear with me. I was trying to remember which live stream was so I can just find the image. Oh, you know what? I can find it on my Google Keep. We'll be here. Sorry, just bear with me. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna have a quick, quick look.
Okay, here it is. So best bear with me. Thank you for your patience there. So I'm just going to quickly give you an example of the way Queen, the Queen's hair would have been when she would have was buried. So I'm just going to open this image on the new tab. So I'll let you have a look at this image here. And I'll let you have a look at this image here. So what you'll notice with royal figures is that their hair should be placed in braids, basically. So it should be braided. So this hair is not even twisted, but it's braided. And I've made very, very clear on several um, levels that when it comes to the mummy of Queen T, what you're looking at is hair that has been outbraided. Now, I am very, very aware that if you go all across Africa and not even just restricted to the horn, all across Africa, you can get people with wavy hair just like Queen T. Absolutely the case. But the reason why I stand by the fact that this is what you're looking at is a braid out is because of the format. You can see the pattern. You can see that they're following these very stiff patterns and women on this um, stream will know or recognize that pattern when you take braids out of your hair. Your hair follows these very kind of like, you can almost see the individual plaits that were, that were a part of this braid out. So you can see that this hair here, I see this hair all the time. Okay, if my wife <laughs> or my daughter has their hair in braids and they take out their hair, that's what the hair looks like. Okay, it's very, very, not very different. Now, obviously, you can just compound that with the fact that, you know, these women would have had horn, um, Sudanic, Sahelian hair, which tends to be softer than your kind of like standard, um, well, in my case, Nigerian hair that I see. It's a little bit softer. Absolutely. This is just well within the range of normality for an African woman. So this is an African woman. I don't look at the mummy of Queen T and go, oh, it's not her. I actually did an overlay of the mummy of Queen T with the reconstruction that I did and it lined up so well feature wise. I've actually been converted because I was very skeptical about the mummy of Queen T, but I've actually been converted now where I'm actually like, you know what, it, it could be her. It could be her. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. I, I think it's her personally. So, yeah, just kind of like sharing that with you guys. Um, so, yes, you can share these. I mean, overexposed, like I said, overexposed. The Only this one is probably true to the color. And you can see, I mean, do, I mean, doesn't she even have any shame to the fact that she'll post both of these on the same page? You've got clear color differentials. You have white skin, black skin. That's just a massive amount of deception going on there. You're trying to just pick the images that serve your purpose. Just, you know pick one and go with it so this is as close as you're going to get to true and you can see anyone will tell you that's just standard if Af an east african outbreed let's just call it that to keep it really easy okay um stephen carter thank you very much for the donation he said thank you so much for not letting obfusc obfuscations that's always a hard word to say by these nickel slick operators go unchecked you've given us a language to help combat their lies i hope so i hope i haven't um, made you guys too um, nauseous though because <laughs> this is really like low really low level stuff really low brow entertainment here but let's uh let's keep going where is the afro in braids darling in braids <laughs> Now, this is going to be the grand unveil. This is what she looked like painted. Queen T and Amenhotep, the tomb of Amenemet, TT 277. So, guys, can you see it? This is what Queen T really looked like, guys. You can see it there. Well, yeah, she is a bit paler there. I'm going to give you that. This is what she really looks like, deliberately painted, yeah. 
and it's not black. Okay, so you've just decided that this is deliberate paint. Yeah, all those statues we saw, <laughs> which clearly had deliberate paint on them, that wasn't deliberate, but this one here is deliberate paint. Yeah, not faded at all. Okay, well done. This is a nice brush. Yeah, well done. Okay, yeah, yeah, she's, she must be white. Okay. Let's see, did she use that image, that tomb again? TT27. There, oh, there she is. A little bit darker in this one, though, isn't it? If you look at her arm, a little bit darker here. Let's have a look at two. Who wants to look at tomb TT277? Does anyone think we should do a little bit of research to see if there's any deception going on here? Because I, I, I smell deception. I wonder if there's any deception going on here. Let's have a look. So anyway, let's have a let's have a look. I'm gonna see if I can pull up tomb TT277. Bear with me, guys. I'll be just a moment, okay? Just a moment. Let's have a look at Tomb TT277. Oh, look, I've got a link here from OsirisNet. This is the website that she quoted from earlier. Let's see if we can learn anything about Tomb TT277. So it is Tomb TT277, yeah, that's right. And she did find a kind of, you know, a weirdly coloured Queen T in there. Let's let's see, let's see. What does it say about Tomb TT277? I'm going to scroll down. General information. According, so let's let's read from here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, guys. I want you to kind of like, let's 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 read in here. Dating, according to Camp, Tomb TT278, contrary to what Vandia thought, preceded Tomb TT277. So Tomb TT277 is old, is newer, sorry, than T2278, which is older, because this one preceded it. And that this later dates from the 20th dynasty. Can someone tell me which, which dynasty is, is Queen T from? Because I, I I've I've forgotten. I've just had a bit of a brain block there. Which which dynasty is Queen T from? Because the last time I checked, Queen T is from the 18th dynasty. I think that's right. I th I think that's right. I could be wrong. Let's look. Let's 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 for the sake of fun. Let's Google reign of Queen T. Let's have a look. Reign of Queen. Because I could be wrong there. I don't know. I could be wrong. Oh, oh no, I'm right. 18th dynasty, yep. Um, from 1391 to 1353 BC, yeah? 18th dynasty. Let's see when the 20th dynasty was, yeah? So let's have a quick Google, see uh, 20th dynasty, Egypt. Let's have a look there, see if we can get any dates. Ooh, 11... 89 to 1077 quick maths 1390 to 1189 that's 201 years so your reference for what queen t actually looked like was created 201 years after her life so your reference of the real deliberate depiction of what Queen T actually looked like was created in the 19th dynasty, sorry, in the 20th dynasty, 200 years after she passed. So 200 years, so let's just, I want, let's, let's put this in, let's, let's, let's put this correctly. So that would be, from today's date, that would be 1824. <laughs> yeah. So, I now know what people looked like in 824 better than they did, yeah? So all of those busts that we showed you, we looked at nearly a dozen busts of Queen T in this live stream, all created during her actual life. And you said none of these look like her. You said none of the paintwork was deliberate. You said none of the features is what she actually looked like. But what she actually looks like is this 200 years 
later. Yeah, that's that's this is what she actually looks like now. Just a pop quiz for the for the people in the chat. Okay, just a pop quiz for the people in the chat. What did the chemi the chemicians or the chemetics or the ancient Egyptians, whatever you want to call them, we're not going to do the the whole semantics of it right now. What did they do with their rulers after they died? What was the um other than obviously mummify them? What would happen to the greatest rulers in ancient Egypt? What would happen to them? I mean, because I mean, we, we need to educate this person clearly because they don't know a lick about ancient Egyptian history. Does anyone know? What do we do when we had great rulers? What did the ancient Egyptians do to them? So I think you all know, all right? The answer is that they deified them or at least they became a part of the Netaru, didn't they? So what you're actually seeing here in the tomb TT277 is not lifelike portraits of Amenhotep III and Queen T. This would have been them in their deified states, okay? And this, in when people were in their deified states, that is actually where you would get the symbolic use of colour, okay? Because they become like the gods, okay? They, they join the pantheon, for want of a better word, okay? That's how Osiris began. Osiris is believed was a real person, but then was deified, okay? All of the ancient Egyptian, all the gods in the ancient Egyptian pantheon at one point would have been great people or rulers, and then they were eventually passed into the pantheon and worshipped, okay? So what you're seeing here is a depiction of them as gods, in which case the colours could be symbolic, as we know, all of the ancient Egyptian gods were predict were depicted in a symbolic manner. And yet she's used this artwork or these artworks 200 years <laughs> after the life of Queen T to say this is a portrait because they had time machines in ancient Egypt. <sighs> wow, this is embarrassing. This is, I feel really bad for her. This is embarrassing for her. No black skin and no afro. I'm sorry. Um, what colour do you think black people are? Anyway, let's let's keep it moving. <laughs> so this is her. This is her. We're, we're getting to the end now. This is her big curtain call. Yuya plus Fuya equals T. And she brings out these mummies. Okay. Should we have some fun? I think we should have some fun. Let's have some fun with Yuya, Tuya and T. And let's see if these people are actually... Because what, you know, you can see the implication here, isn't it? Look at the the wavy blonde hair um, and the wavy hair of T. These were all white people, right? Or these were all Eurasians, right? Let's have a look. Let's have a look and see if that's actually logical because we can we can test this. Once again, we, we know. where are we going with this? I'll be interested to know. So what I'm going to do, let's let's start off with you ya mummy. So let's start off with Queen T's father, because yes, her parents were Yuya and Tuya. Now, I love the bust of Yuya because people see it and they see it does have very, very bright, bright blonde hair. And we'll get to exactly what that is because it's hilarious that people are now clinging onto this. But let's start off. I'm going to start off, strangely enough, with this image. Okay? I'm going to start off, strangely enough, with this image. I'm going to open the image in the new tab. Will it let me? Yes. I'm going to open the image in the new tab, because this is typical Eurocentrism, but I just want to share this with you, because even they know when they create this stuff that it just doesn't hold any ground. Um, has that worked? Where's the new tab? Yes. Okay. Cool. So why have I shown you this? This is obviously some ridiculous reconstruction. But why have I shown you this? Well, look, let's have a look at the lips of Yuya. Now, guys, here's a, a pop quiz for everybody on the live stream really quickly. Yeah. Is there anyone who, as a result of mummification, ends up having thicker lips than they had in real life? <laughs> do 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 a mummy's does do do mummy's lips get 
thicker than they were in real life or do they get thinner? I think we all know the answer that your features will actually thin out substantially. You lose all of the moisture. I spoke about the fact that mummy, when you're looking at mummy, you're looking at essentially a desiccated human being. And the example that I gave or always give is that you'll never find a mummy with breasts, for instance, and a bati or any of these things. OK, they won't have these things because they'll all be completely desiccated. And the same thing happens to your face. Now, have a look at the lips of Yuya for the reconstruction. They've actually made them fitter. Can you imagine how big Yuya's lips would have been in real life? Can you can you imagine how big Yuya's lips would have been in real life? The fact that even mummified, you can see you've just got these two empty sacks on the face. They would have been massive. He had massive lips. A, a monkey could tell that. And even the nose, they've kept exactly the same size. Now, let's let's make the nose bigger considering how big it is in its mummified state. This is very clearly an African person. Now let's talk about the hair. So, cause I really want to tackle this. So let's talk about the hair. Now I'm going to pull up an image of Yuya's bright blonde hair. Here's a really good one. So there's Yuya's bright blonde hair. Does, now tell me anyone, does that look like natural blonde hair to you? Does that look like natural blonde hair to you? Anyone with common sense will tell you no. What you're looking at is the result of peroxide. So if you haven't been on one of my live streams about hair before, I've explained this ad nauseum. The color of your hair is a result of two, I'm going to say chemicals. Okay, I don't know if they're enzymes, but I'm just going to say chemicals. Theomelanin and eumelanin. Theomelanin gives you red and blonde hair and eumelanin gives you brown and black hair. Eumelanin is dominant and theomelanin, it, theomelanin is recessive, so it sits underneath. So essentially, when you have, everyone has a mixture of both chemicals, both theomelanin and eumelanin. And this is why black people or Asian people or anyone with brown and brunette hair is able to apply peroxide to their hair and their hair will turn either red or blonde or white depending on, on the level of peroxide or the amount of peroxide or the amount of process they go through. And what essentially happens is it puts your hair through oxidative stress. And this creates chemical destabilization, which will destabilize the eumelanin, but will leave the theomelanin intact because theomelanin is a little bit stronger. Black people have naturally red and blonde hair. Not some, all. That's why you're all able to dye your hair and your hair gets lighter. This is not naturally blonde hair that you're looking at. Let me make this very, very clear. This was not naturally blonde hair. In fact, just to kind of drive the point home, I'm going to put on my screen the image of a natural blonde because it's really important that this entire argument just needs to get absolutely thrown in the bin. It's the most stupid argument that people make. So this is what a natural blonde looks like. OK, this is what a natural blonde looks like. OK, I'm sure you've come across a natural blonde before. Now, what you'll notice about a natural blonde. Sorry, let me stretch this up. What you'll notice about a natural blonde is that natural blonde hair is always dark at the roots. In fact, when you get someone with natural blonde hair and they get a buzz cut, it's very hard to even tell that they're blonde a lot of the time. You might think that they're brunette until the hair grows out a little bit. So you'll see that it's dark at the root. This is a natural blonde. If you look closely, the eyebrows are essentially brown. This is natural blonde hair. Now, let me show you for comparison, peroxide blonde hair. This is peroxide blonde hair. OK, this is a result of chemical destabilization. It is blonde to the roots. And this is a black man with peroxide blonde hair. If that's not a good enough example, let's pull up another one. Here's another black man with peroxide blonde hair. Now, let me, for those of you who are not getting the point, let me drive this home. 
and pull up that image of Yuya again. And tell me, does Yuya's hair look more like a natural blonde or more like a peroxide blonde? Which does his hair look more like? Wouldn't you say that that is quite a similar situation that we have going on there? It's very clear that this is a result of... So the point is that there has been oxidative stress or some kind of chemical process that has changed the hair colour during the mummification process. Obviously, 3,000 years could do that to you. Or also, Egyptologists blasting these mummies with radiation like Sheikh Antidiop said they were doing, yeah, could cause this to happen to hair. None of this is a natural occurrence. So when you see the mummy of both Yuya and Thuya, understand that we're talking about hair that has been changed artifice. Okay, it's not naturally blonde hair because naturally blonde hair doesn't look like that. Even in Solomon, and I know a lot of people will say, well, you get blonde people in the Solomon. No, it doesn't look like that. This is chemically blonde hair. All of these people had black hair in life, every single one of them. And you're looking at, chemical destabilization so you know i i don't have to sell that argument to you i just need to show you the images and you know for a fact when blonde hair goes blonde to the roots like an electric blonde you know for a fact that is a chemical process you know for a fact that's not natural and the fact that eurocentrists even lean on that is really quite desperate but you know there you go um let's move on So, over here, she's arguing, oh, look, Queen T has... So, this is... <laughs> Sorry, this is Eurocentrism again. So, I talk about the fact that her mitochondrial DNA, that's a single line ancestry, lines up with K, which happens to be popular in modern North Africa. This now takes the... Now, I'm going to do the whole DNA thing, but... Let me just quickly share a diagram with everybody, just very, very quickly, so you just kind of understand how stupid this argument is, okay? And I do I do always push you guys in that I remain, and I will remain, a haplotype sceptic. I don't think you can prove race or anything from haplotypes other than the movement of people, which has happened since time immemorial. But I just want to share with you one specific image. Just bear with me as my PDF crashes. Okay, so I just want to share you this image, single line ancestry, okay, if you didn't know this. So just to be clear, we get our mitochondrial DNA from our female ancestry, our mother's mums, 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 and we get our Y DNA from our male ancestry, i.e. our dads 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 but it's a single line okay this is why i always rephrase it as single line ancestry so just to paint the picture very clearly if i go up three generations over here so let me zoom in actually so you guys can see this properly this is quite important if i go up three generations here i have eight ancestors who contribute to my ancestry okay which one of those eight ancestors is most important when it comes to who you are, what makes makes you who you are biologically? The answer is quite simply, you have no control over that, okay? <laughs> um, it depends on how your genes mix up by the time they get to you, okay? But the bottom line is it's random. It could be this person here. It could be, you could be a mixture of five of these people. You could be a mixture of four of these people. Because you can drop people out of your ancestry based on how your kind of how it works. The only people you get 50-50 from are your actual immediate parents. And after that, it you, know, you can get ancestors dropped out. But the bottom line is, if I go up three generations, okay, eight ancestors. That's, that's This is just your great-grandparents, by the way. You have eight great-grandparents. Everyone does. Okay, so you have eight great-grandparents. Only one of them carries your mitochondrial DNA. Now... If we're talking about the haplotype K, I think we're going back 20,000 years to the origin of the haplotype. Now, 
I've only gone back seven generations on this diagram. And you can see if I go back just seven generations, that mitochondrial DNA marker I have contributes 128th of your ancestry. In other words, an amount so minuscule, it has no say in terms of what you turn out like. It has no say whatsoever. It's just way too diluted. And yet people will use this ridiculous argument about the fact that people carry a marker to say they're from, you know, yes, it's predominant in North Africa, but it's present all over Africa and it's present all over Europe. Yeah, <laughs> it's still present. It's not predominant and it doesn't have the same density, but it's still present. You can't make the argument of race based on a marker. And I also could go into the fact that I've got um, the autosomal DNA results of Queen T and it shows her to be unequivocally African. Um, and I'm, I don't think I'll pay it now because this live stream has gone on way too long already. But the point is that this is what she's resorted to, a single marker in her mitochondrial DNA to say, well, that means she must be Arab or... Oh, come on, this is pathetic. <laughs> T's grandson looked like this. And once again, she's referring to the single bust of King Tutankhamun where he doesn't have brown skin. Yes, we'll, we'll just ignore the golden throne. We'll just ignore the several Schwab T's. We'll just ignore literally every other bust and we'll just focus on this one of him as a child. And by the way, just a little, this is a little side note, by the way. And as many of the people on this stream are my fellow Africans, you'll know this. A lot of Europeans don't know. So if you're European on this live stream, just to let you know, all Africans are lighter in childhood than they are in adulthood. Yeah? I actually had, <laughs> when I was a child, I had my little lighty face <laughs> when I was first born. I grew up a lot darker, ended up being a lot darker. When my son was born, he looked Chinese. At least for the first six months, people thought we'd kidnapped the baby. You wouldn't guess that now, you know? <laughs> but people thought we literally kidnapped the baby. Yeah, literally. So... If we show or we display that um, accurately in artworks, we now have Eurocentrists running to claim, claim, you know, oh my gosh, she's a little bit lighter in this one. He's, he's, he's Arab. It's like, come on. Like the moment an African, if we showed you the truth of our diversity and we were really truthful, like the ancient Egyptians were in how we paint ourselves, you guys just take it as an opportunity. And I say you guys as the Eurocentrists just take it as an opportunity to then steal everything. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like we can't even be accurate without having our history stolen. It's, it's really ridiculous. I mean, what, I don't know why she posted that <laughs> picture of, um, what's his name again? Someone remind me of what this guy's name is. He has the most up-to-date um, Book of the Dead. And I've done a video about him before and I've completely forgotten his name. <sighs> Someone will remember it. Petrina, thank you. Thank you very much. You're so generous. I appreciate that. That's like your second or third donation today. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, but the point is that, yeah, a lot of people um, in the African community go from light skin to dark skin like it's not a big deal one last thing let's, let's see what she has to say in additional renditions of Queen T showing her in the same dark brown tone where multiple colour tones are also present proving the original colour has indeed been preserved that's not Queen T isn't it? notice no Im imaginary afro okay that is a statuette of a servant that had the same name. Really? The statuette was originally painted Egyptian blue. The paint has since worn away, exposing the wood. Faint black and white pigment remains, delineating her eyes and eyebrows. Painted designs detailing her costume and jewellery would have covered it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have fun with this. Okay, so I love the fact that she's, targeted this as a kind of a little sign off this is not queen t 
this is a statuette of Lady T. And actually, you'll Google this and you'll get mixed results. But let me, let's have a look. Should we have a little bit of an exploration as to why I suggested that this, I would say probably slash almost definitely is Queen T. Now, actually, before I go into that, one of the reasons why she can't have this to be Queen T. Let's, let's talk about that really quickly. So why does she not want it to be Queen T? Well, I would suggest the reason why she doesn't want to be Queen T is because she sees what I see and she sees what you all see and she sees that's definitely an African child, okay? Unequivocally an African child. I mean, I could just pull up an image like this beside it and you can see we're looking at roughly the same thing. Now, I'm going to pull up a statuette this statuette and I'm going to give you my reason as to why I believe this actually is Queen T and why I believe she's thoroughly incorrect. Okay, so the first thing is let's just pull up the image. Bear with me, where's it going? Why is that open in the browser? What I'm doing? Oh it's a web okay sorry. Oh, I'm gonna have to do that way. Okay, so let's uh Open image in new tab. Sorry, bear with me, guys. So I'm just going to pull up the image because it's quite important that we just kind of have this one in front of us. Okay. So this is Statuette of Lady T. Okay. And it's a lovely statuette, by the way. And the first thing I'm going to say to you is that this is a child. Okay. And the reason I'm going to tell you this is a child is because, first of all, obviously, I have a good understanding of proportions, body proportions. You can look at the actual body and you can look at the ratio of the head to the body. That is clearly a child. If I put an adult next to her that was done in the same time period and likely by similar artists, so I'll put her mother up, whose name is Tuya, or at least the person I'm proposing is her mother. I could be incorrect, but I'll leave you to the answer of that. I'm gonna open that in a new tab and we compare the proportions, you can see when it came to proportions, they had no problems in ancient Egypt, okay? Ancient Egyptian artwork proportions are always really spot on. So this is her mother, Tuya, and you can see with Tuya's proportions, this is a woman, as opposed to this, which is a child, okay? You can see the head is much larger, okay? The body's not fully developed, okay? You're dealing with adult and child here quite clearly now why is this significant now why is this significant that this is definitely a child well let's have a look at the description of who this person is we know that this person is called statuette of lady t in fact let's just pull up the description really quickly and i'm going to pull up the where is it gone um here it is What have I done with it? Okay, give me one second. Sorry, guys. We are going to do all our... We're doing all our receipts today. So we're in for a penny, in for a pound. You just have to bear with me as I, as I, as I pull this up. I'll be literally one second. Um, let's get this going. Here we go. Okay, here we go. All right, thank you for your patience. I do have it now. I'm just gonna pull it up here. All right. Thank you for your patience, guys. Okay, cool. So I just want to pull this up. So, Statue of Lady T. Bear with me, guys. We're gonna get through this. Statue of Lady T, Mistress of the Harem. You see she's called. Now, what does mistress of the harem mean? Let's just be very, very clear about what mistress of the harem means. Mistress is not in the sense of the modern terminology of the word mistress, i.e., you know, she's not a lady who works for the harem or is part of the harem. Mistress is the same term that's used, you know, the feminine term of the word master, okay? And when someone's called a mistress or master, it means that their parent is the lord or the lady, Okay, 
So whoever the chief of the harem is or the lord of the harem is, this would be the daughter of the lord of the harem. Okay, so this would be hence making her the mistress of the harem. Okay. And we know the name is Lady Taye or Lady T. I say T, but it's actually Taye. And Taye is actually a common name in Nigeria, but that's another digression we're not going to go into. So we have here Lady Taye, mistress of the harem. What do we know about Lady Taye? First of all, we know Taye is a name of Nubian origin. So we know that a lot of Nubian names had um, became very popular in ancient Kemet. And Taye was one of them. So Taya is a name of Nubian origin. It's relatively rare. I don't think we see it used outside of the 18th dynasty. So it's a relatively rare name. And we also know that Queen Taya grew up in the palace. And the reason we know she grew up in the palace was because her parents worked in the palace. Okay, so Tuya and Yuya actually were a part of the aristocracy, so to speak. So she grew up in the Paris itself before she married. Now we know that she married around the age of 13. And to me, if I'm looking at this statuette, this is looking like someone who is maybe aged 11, 12. So maybe around the age of just before they got married, which would explain why she'd be called Lady T at this stage and not Queen T. Now, in order to substantiate this theory, I would have to prove that her parents were in that role that I've just mentioned before. So let's see if I have any proof of that. Let's see if I have any proof of that. Um, Why have I lost all my links? This is really frustrating. God, this is so annoying. Sorry, guys, bear with me. I'm just trying to find my link. This is this has happened twice now today. This is actually really irritating. Um, Statue of Lady T. All right, I'll have to find it on the live. Bear with me. Don't worry, it won't be too hard to find. Let's just uh, see. Tuya. Let's see if we can find that link. This will do. Okay, so. Remember we spoke about the fact that Tuya is her mother. Thanks for your patience, by the way, guys. Um, I've had to find a random link, which is not the same one I had before. But let's have a look at the role of Tuya. And actually, you can Google this for yourself. You'll see here, Tuya was the head of the harem. Okay, or that she's been described as the chief of the harem. So if Tuya was the chief of the harem, that would make her sons masters of the harem and her daughters the mistresses of the harem. So we have a statuette here. Once again, I'm not arguing conclusively that this definitely is Queen T, but we certainly have a really strong argument because we have a statuette here of Queen T shown as the mistress of the harem, meaning that her parents were the lady or the lords or the chiefs of the harem. We have a rare name, Taya, that is barely used in the New Kingdom. And we have her at an age that she would have been before she got married. But we also have the situation where Eurocentrists can't accept that this is another bust of Queen T because this one is so undeniably African looking. But they'll just say the wood's darkened once again. And even though she has clear African features and looks like this African child or this African, I mean, this one's even better, looks just like, you know, your very standard 11-ish year old African child. They just can't accept that. But you can see that. 
Okay, so there you go. That's the uh, that's the my that's my rationale as to why I believe this is Queen T. Once again, if you want to argue it's not Queen T, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. But at least I have some kind of rationale for saying that it is Queen T. I'm sure she doesn't have a rationale for saying that it isn't. Now let's adjust. Let's just quickly address some of these other claims. No imaginary afro. No, she doesn't have an imaginary afro. But we've already looked at a bust of Queen T today. Where her hair is in exactly the same hairstyle. And this is the tripartite style. Once again, if you've watched my crowns video, you'll know that the number of hairstyles in ancient Egypt were actually relatively limited. So it's not hard to find styles being used. So if I just quickly pull up the... Oop, don't dry on me. Actually... Where is it? Oh, did I close it? Oh, I'll just quickly open it again. Bear with me. Here it is. So if I just quickly pull out the picture of Queen T as an adult with her hair in a tripartite style, exactly the same. So whether or not she has an imaginary afro is neither here nor there. She rocked the same hairstyle in twists and in braids throughout her whole life, like most African women. So, you know, that one's thrown out of the window. She's not a servant. You've got no evidence that this woman was a servant. You've just seen mistress of the harem and made an assumption and a false assumption based on that. The statuette, this is the really interesting one, yeah? The statuette was originally painted Egyptian blue. And this is just one of those errors that she's made because she's just got really bad comprehension of information that she reads. So basically she's seen a, a materials list and then taken that literally as, as verbatim. So let's have a look at this materials list that she's seen because it's quite, it's quite hilarious that she's made this error. If I could find any of my link, links again, which all, but I'll just, I, I can find this link actually. That'll be in my email. So that'll be just here. I tell you, every time I go to do a live stream, that's when all of my links suddenly disappear and I lose myself. Okay, so here it is. Uh, right here. This is it. This is it. Okay, cool. So that one. Actually, it might even be this one that I'm on at the moment. Yeah, it is. Brilliant. So here's the one that she's referencing over here. So it says here, medium, wood, Egyptian blue and paint. So based on the fact that they've mentioned those as the three materials. Yeah. They've only mentioned those three materials. She said to herself, oh, well, it was all painted blue once. No, it was never all painted blue. Like, that, you, that is the most stupid thing I've ever heard. We spoke earlier about the fact that when wood is painted or varnished, it needs, if in order to remove paint, you need to remove it using a solvent or using acid, okay? And even when you use a solvent or acid to remove paint from the surface of wood, you'll still have lots of residue that will be stuck within the cracks and within the crevices of the artwork. That's how wood works. The only reason they've referenced Egyptian blue is because of the necklace that she has that has a blue amulet, which is just basically a piece of wood that they've painted using Egyptian blue. And she's mistaken that to think that the whole thing was covered in blue paint and then the blue paint was, oh, please sit down before you hurt yourself. And just to kind of like really stress how wrong you are about this, I'm just gonna quickly pull this over. Once again, let me just quickly maximize this. I'm going to pull this over. This is the same piece of artwork. Okay, and let's have a look at the material list on this site. So if you look at the material list here, wood, carnelian, now gold, glass, Egyptian blue, and paint. So what you saw before was not an exhaustive list 
of materials. It was just the one they could be bothered to list in that article. And also just whilst we're on the image, if I just zoom in here, you'll notice there's no blue. Okay, one second, let me just click on that. There we go. You'll notice there's no blue in the cracks of the hair because it was never painted blue. This statuette was always intended to be as you view it. And the idea that something could be painted blue, then have acid removed to remove the blue paint, but still have the colors in the eyeballs, shows you how stupid Eurocentrist can be. I mean, how utterly dumb do you have to be to make that argument? So, Lord have mercy. I think we're at the end of it now. Sorry guys, I knew I, I knew it was gonna end up taking long. <laughs> and so some of that delay was my fault because I didn't I, I always end up going in these lives and not finding it. So let's she's even underlined it. Wood, Egyptian blue, and paint. That means I must be right about this being covered in blue. No, you're wrong. It was never covered in blue paint, moron. Goodness me, that's why they've mentioned the Egyptian blue. Okay, can you see on the necklace? Goodness me. Real levels of undying stupidity going on here. That is why this rendition of Queen T is indeed accurate. <laughs> oh, she put a little laughter in there. I think everyone's laughing at you, my dear. Everyone is laughing at you. Absolute clown show. Oh, no, I'm not going to show you a logo. Bomb you. Yeah, so... There you go, all right? I know I, I kind of went on a little bit there, yeah? <laughs> I did, I rambled, and I should have had some of those links. In fact, I wanna find that beeswax links link and actually share, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just gonna share the link and I'll let you read it because um, yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna share the link and if you can be bothered, you can read the part about the different waxes and resins that are used. I'm popping it in the chat now. You can read the, the you can read that link about the different waxes and the resins that are used, which shows clearly that they had access to a massive range of colors when it came to basically varnishing their artwork. I'm not going to do that now because I can't be bothered to find the quote, but it's in there and you will find it. OK, but that is it. That was a breakdown of the best that Eurocentrism has to offer. That was literally the best arguments as to why Queen T was supposed to be a European slash Arab. So we had, let's have a quick digest. We had a 200 year old Stele artwork that was used <laughs> as opposed to the several busts that we looked at of Queen T, several on this live stream, all depicting her consistently as an African woman. We have, good Lord, a preponderance of supporting evidence to suggest that these were deliberate pieces of artwork and the colorings on them were deliberate and every accusation they made i can't remember most of them they're so stupid we i think we've gone through all of them and debunked literally every single one of them so that's it really so you know idiot person i know you're watching this um i hope you enjoyed me completely melting your rubbish video and to be honest with you, I think what I'll do is I'll get a when I on when I get the other channel up and running because you don't deserve time on this channel. But I just want to give my 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 um, audience a little bit of entertainment, and I think this has been a nice little Friday night d digest for everybody. Um, those in the UK probably gonna go straight to sleep now. But um, we've had a bit of enjoyment doing this live stream. But when I get my other channel up and running, I am going to absolutely destroy every single video you've made because they're rubbish and it doesn't take me that long it doesn't take me that much research to be able to debunk your crap so i'm going to be doing that but i hope you enjoyed that everybody um there's i think someone's gonna lose some sleep tonight um <laughs> but yeah um i hope you enjoyed that and and, and, I, and trust me guys i'll take your advice i appreciate all of the kind words that you're saying in terms of not taking these people to heart i honestly don't i ignored them for so long and i i don't mind ignoring them but this is just kind of like for me it's a bit of enjoyable content that we can kind of all enjoy together and you can see 
that when it comes down to it, they just don't have any leg to stand on when it comes to the ridiculous arguments they make. So, yeah, we'll let her keep believing in her 200-year-old um, stele artwork and we'll keep believing the truth, and that is that the ancient Egyptians looked like their artworks and they were very proud Africans. So thank you very much. See, Francis, I really appreciate that. And thank you for the donations. I had lots of donations today. I really did. Um, C. Francis just gave me a couple of dollars there and I really appreciate that. Um, I hope I didn't miss anyone. Um, if I did, in fact, I, won't, I don't want to miss anyone. So let me just quickly have a quick scroll through and make sure that I haven't chopped anyone off or not said thank you to anyone. Z Zion, did I say thank you to you for that $20? Thank you, man. Thank you so much. That's so generous. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And guys, it does go a long way, man. I appreciate every single donation. You can't understand. Petrina, I've thanked you several times already. I'm going to just go back through and thank everyone again. And, and thank everyone who's just on the stream. Even if you don't have the finances or didn't want to donate, which is absolutely fine. It's your prerogative. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate supporting the work. I appreciate you interacting. Because if I was on here and I didn't see that, you saw every time I didn't see that kind of comment stream being active and it kind of quieted out and it died down. I get really nervous that I'm so I need you guys kind of like interacting. You've done it throughout. So I appreciate it. I do read the comments, even if I don't get a chance to read them all out. Look how long the live stream is, even with me not reading comments. So <laughs> I appreciate it. Stephen Carter, thank you very, very, very much um, for your donation. Um Oh, that's as far as it's going to let me scroll up. And I think I thanked everyone else above there anyway. But thank you guys so much. Don't know what to say. I think, I think, I think, um, I think I'll, I'll wrap it up there. Uh, I, I mean, it's gone on for long enough. And I'm sure my UK people will be happy if I have shut this down now. So hit up some likes before you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. And I'll see you on... Oh, tomorrow. Sorry, before everyone goes, don't shut down yet. Yeah. I'm going live tomorrow with Quelly Mika. Yes, the very famous Quelly Mika who went head to head with Metatron and served Metatron his his tushy on a platter. Yeah, <laughs> he whooped him 2-0. I have a live stream tomorrow with him and we're going to be going through Metatron's video, just having a discussion, breaking it down. It's going to be a really good time. It's going to be the first time we've collaborated. We've been meaning to do it for ages. So if you don't do anything else, set your notification, your reminder on. That's going to be tomorrow evening, I believe, at 9 p.m. Um, B BM, no, no, G GMT. 9 p.m. GMT, which I don't know what works out in your, in your sub. I think well, basically an hour earlier and today's live stream i'll be going live with quenny mika so make sure you join us because that's going to be really cool but yeah that's it from me thank you for joining me on the king's monologue and i'll see you on the next one bye Katrina, <laughs> I was about to go and you give me another three dollars. So thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it, man. You guys are amazing. And I really I'm just reading the um the the comments. I felt a bit sheepish not being able to find the links a couple of times, but you guys seem to have been very forgiving for that. So I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. And I'm closing down the stream now. So I'm gonna say thank you and good night and God bless.